What is up, hackers? How's it going today? How's everyone doing? All right. Okay. So I was just looking at some bugs. Okay. Where was I at? So today uh, I did just a little bit of hacking on stuff uh, actually last night. Um, and so yesterday in the stream, we went through and we, we first of all started off by uh, porting some functions from OpenSSL, and we ended up fuzzing those in uh, for 6.502. So we ported some OpenSSL, we compiled it for 6.502, uh, which was kind of interesting, um, and it, it worked out great. We, we found uh, Heartbleed, and then we found a variation of Heartbleed that was remote code execution, uh, on architectures where an int is uh, 16 bits. Uh, thanks for the sub gift. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Might as well. It's fun. Um, so today, uh, and then we kind of started looking into getting C tags up and running, and we we built C tags for 6502. In this case, we're looking specifically at OpenBSD's implementation. Um, however, in uh, we kind of hacked it up. If if any of you were around yesterday, uh, we we really hacked it up. We ended up like making modifications to C tags such that it used our uh, functions for like getting characters and and ungetting characters, and that led us to a lot of issues. That led us down a path of like probably an hour or two of basically getting crashes out of our fuzzer and then questioning the results of the fuzzer because we had our own bugs that we knew were influencing those things. So last night I kind of went through and I started to work on um, getting everything kind of set up in a much cleaner way. So let's see where we're at. So now I have a test application here that if I run nmake, I get all of these unresolved externals. Um, and in this case, I actually have... Uh, not that. So I switched away from using our custom configuration uh, for the file format for 6502, but we're going to go back and we're probably going to start heading back down that direction again. So thanks for the sub, of course. Yeah, what's up? What about adding dictionary-based mutations? In, in this case, like, yes. For every target, yes. In this case, we just... Uh, we have, like, full code coverage. <laughs> so... So we're, we're not really missing anything. Uh, it's just too small of a target. Um, so the goal today is to widen that up, bring in some of the other parsers, and then also start making modifications of the command line options such that we could see if those flags uh, change code. So yesterday, when I, when I looked at some of the coverage, and I don't actually think I have one open, um, but when I kind of looked at the coverage yesterday, uh, I would see, let's see, where, where do we go? We go into put entries. Uh, there should be a, a something, C entries here. So when I looked at the <coughs> coverage graph <coughs> yesterday, and I actually, uh, I don't have the coloring for this one because this is a new one I built. Um, there were a couple paths that were missed, and I actually went through in post, and I determined that every single path that we missed was due to a global that came from a command line arg that we did not modify. And that means that there's code that we're missing because we're not fuzzing in different states of the application. We're not fuzzing it in, in different contexts um, that it can be started in. So we want to kind of go down that path. However, uh, I realized that I could probably get the libc stuff to work in, in our custom 6502 target. So that's what I worked on. Uh, now we're using a T none, so a none target that also has ASCII uh, character encodings, uh, to my knowledge. Um, and then we just have a copy of the configuration, and this is just this is basically directly from. Um, oops, this is in config. Uh, this is pretty much directly from the none.config, except we changed a couple things. We changed the BSS section from being a BSS type to being an, a read-writable type. That means that the BSS will actually get kind of created in this output file format, which means that the BSS section will get loaded correctly into IDA. So it's really just a hack to make it so that we can view labels and things in the BSS section. Um, 
that doesn't change code at all. It doesn't affect uh, how it behaves at all. Um, then I uh, made a couple of these read-only, which were read-write, and, and that's it. Everything else stayed the same. One thing that's interesting that has changed is I found that there's a way to set the zero page start. Um, and in this case, we're starting the zero page at hex 80. And that means that there shouldn't be any more accesses to uh, zero to 7F, which means we can map those out and we can hopefully catch some null DRFs. So our bug we found yesterday in CTAGS was a null DRF bug. However, it showed up as like really weird DRFs. Um, and that's likely because the null DRF was actually succeeding. And then that caused everything to kind of go crazy from there. So we have kind of this new architecture that I'm building up. This is forked from the nun configuration. And that means everything, we should be able to have a full working libc environment here. So. When I started working on that, in this case, I actually grabbed, um, I grabbed a copy of the, uh, where are we at? We are in soft serve, uh, soft serve, 6502 test target app. So in this case, I'm, I kind of cleaned up some of our, our build folders. We have the config file here. We have C tags in here. This is actually the entire C tags folder um, stripped out of OpenBSD. And in fact, I actually went through um, and I pulled it out correctly uh, using the like git uh, like prune or, or something. I can't remember what it was. But basically, we also have the git history uh, for these files, which is really nice. We kind of just have this stripped out in a nice clean environment, but we don't have the rest of OpenBSD here. Now, one thing you'll notice is we've only changed a couple files here. And if I look, uh, in fact, I'm going to set up a git ignore quick on all.o files. Okay. So if I look at git diff, here are the things that we changed in, in git or in the um, OpenBSD implementation. We renamed main to C tags under main. That way it doesn't conflict with our main routine. Simple. We removed an error.h include. Um, that doesn't exist in this. Uh, I think that's an OpenBSD specific API, so that's gone. Then, uh, what else did we do? Is that it? Then I added this missing headers uh, that I have included at the top of the ctags.h file. And then I made a modification to max token to instead of be 250, I made it 50. And that means that we don't have as much stack space being used in functions. So we fit within the 6502 constraints of a stack. Uh, and then finally in tree, I removed error.h and I also removed uh, directory entry.h as includes. So we have not made any modifications to the code at all in C tags, which is great. That's what we want. Uh, yesterday we made probably 20 to 30 changes in C tags. And then that makes you question, are the bugs you found due to um, a like an actual bug or is it due to the modifications and the way you hacked it up? So in this case, I can now run nmake um, uh, up here. I can now run nmake and you can see that everything builds just fine. It Everything compiles just fine, but it doesn't link correctly because there are a couple things that we uh, made up here that don't exist yet. So we're going to have to go implement these functions. And then once those functions are implemented, then we can uh, safely have a complete build of C tags that's unmodified in our 6502 environment. That also includes a yak parser, a lisp parser, and a Fortran parser that we previously weren't hitting. So now we're going to fuzz everything. Um, so that's kind of the path we're going to go down. So we, we kind of zoomed out from looking specifically at C. We zoomed out from looking at a modified, hacked up version of it. And now we realized after yesterday's work, we realized that it's a lot easier for, for us to go through and probably do the entire application now. So that's the path we're going to head down. So that means that the um, C tags uh, programs are actually using like uh, gets, uh, yeah, they're actually using these like file I/O things like gets and get C, um, and these things that we quote unquote don't support. However, they're supported by the libc, and since we supply this none type as a target, um, conveniently those actually all end up hitting uh, this sources file here. So all of those, if I don't have these functions uh, created, 
Then we'll see a couple more unresolved externals. In this case, else close open read a um, couple of these functions. So instead, uh, I have these defined to currently do nothing. So we're going to have to implement these, and then we're going to also have to implement these functions. And then at that point, uh, these are a lot easier to implement because these like reads and writes are, we don't have to worry about the unget C and the intricacies of the C libraries. We just have to implement these kind of Unix style things. So we'll implement open, which is really easy. We'll implement read and write, which are really easy. Um, and then close and lseek. And lseek is really easy if we don't care about the whence. Even if we do care about the whence, it's, it's not too hard. So we're going to implement these ones correctly to the POSIX standards. And then we're going to implement these ones. Uh, those should be pretty easy to implement. So that is the path today. We're going from hacking it up to look at a small portion of C tags to looking at the whole thing in a clean environment. And we're also preparing ourselves to fuzz other uh, libc related things um, by setting up this clean environment. Um, it's really cool that we're able to build these basically unmodified. All we we just tuned a couple couple things that decreased our stack size, but other than that, everything is identical in that code base, which is really cool. So, all right, let's hop into it. So we're going to have to implement uh, these functions here. We're going to have to implement open and lseek and close. And to do these, um, when we implement open, we're going to be able to give out these like handles in this file table. And in fact, uh, I'm trying to really make this code a lot cleaner now. Um, since I know, since I know we want to do this correctly, and I'm very happy with this new environment, I'm going to start making new C files here. So we're going to make one called uh, POSIX.C, and this is going to have all of the implementations for these POSIX uh, functions here. And let's see. So this now is going to fail much more catastrophically. I just need to go find that make file, which I think I have open. I do. So. In here, we're going to add another dependency on sources POSIX.C. And then we depend on C tags. I also have this uh, much cleaner make file than we had before. We'll pull in sources POSIX.C. And that's going to be unhappy due to not having types for the offset under T type. OK, that looks much better. So there are a couple so missing headers. This basically defines some things that C tags was not able to find um, and also aren't in standard libc. So we've got just a couple different functions here we're going to have to implement on top of these POSIX ones. So let's, uh, let's stub these out, and we'll start seeing what happens. So I'm going to call I'm going to call this SP sources uh, missing uh, functions. Missing funks dot C. Okay. And we'll just grab these. And all right, we'll start implementing these to do nothing, which is actually not correct when they take uh, variable arguments. So we're going to have to correctly have these handle these variable arguments, but that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, return zero. And we'll move Warren X. Um, so we have Warren and Warren X here. I'm going to just kind of format these so they make more sense. Here we go. And we'll add this uh, missing functions as well. OK. Nice. Pledge must return a value, of course. So pledge will return 0. And we just have a couple things it doesn't like here. Is it size t? 21. I think it's size t. I'm guessing I get that from standard lib. I do. OK, so now we actually have everything built. Hey, Denim Lap, how are you doing today? OK, so now we have this test app here. And we have debug labels and, and kernel.program here. And since I made that BSS section no longer um, actually BSS, everything's included in this program. And in this case, we're going to base this at 1,000 hex, which is pretty straightforward. OK. So now I can apply my symbol file, simparse. 
And I know that the entry point is always at the start. So we can see it's calling zero BSS, initialize uh, libraries. That does some like, um, I guess that initializes some globals. And that was an issue before. So we're init lib does some self-modifying code down here. And that became an issue before because we don't handle uh, self-modifying code. But instead of actually executing uh, from the start of the runtime, we're going to kind of hack it up and do it ourselves. And by doing it ourselves, um, we're going to be able to see when it actually accesses globals that are unused. So I'm going to have this call in our kernel. Uh, I'm going to pull in. I'm going to do extern, uh, what is the C tags, uh, S, oops, SP C tags, and C tags dot C. I just want to find main here, and we'll do this. So we'll say we can find C tags main in another file, and we're going to set up the arguments here as, um, we'll do char star args equal to a null terminated list. And we'll just say um, it'll want the application. And then, so we'll call it c tags, followed by test.c is the file name. And then we'll call c tags, we'll return c tags main uh, with an argc of two and an argv of uh, args. So now that should be getting called. Undefined symbol null, that's in. Uh, where is that again? Uh, um, where did we find that? Was that in types? Uh, standard def.h, I think. Yeah, there we go. So now we have this built uh, with a invocation of that, such that Ida will actually detect that that's part of the graph, and we'll get a little bit better looking uh, Ida here. 6502, nice, nice. OK, and we'll add those symbols. Okay, and now there's a lot more code detected. Ida found a lot more code, which is great. So here is our application, and it's it's relatively large. We're starting to push up into the the higher size of a uh, of an application, and here we can see um, all the different like sections, um, and we can see like these are uninitialized, but since we changed the BSS to be included, uh, those now show up in Ida, which is really nice. So we've got a, a call to main here. That's going to then go to uh, C tags main. And then this is C tags main. This is going to do like the argument parsing and all these different things, which will eventually go into, uh, that'll invoke put entries. No, that's at the very end. Find entries. So find entries will then find the right um, the right handler for the file types. So this is for like the C parser. This is for the Lisp parser. So now we're going to be fuzzing everything. We have to do a little bit of work to get everything working, um, but that shouldn't be too hard. So one thing that I want to look into doing, uh, since we're just trying to polish and improve our workflow, now that we've settled in and we're going to start committing to some pretty pretty serious um, uh, code improvements here, I want to actually go see if I want to go see if there's a way in Ida for us to implement a custom loader. Like, I, I know there's a way, but I don't know how hard it is. Um, I'm curious if we can do it all in Python. And it looks like we might be able to. So this is a PDF loader. OK. And um, accept file, load file loads the file into the database. So what I would like to do is I would automatically like it to load up a, um, I want this to just automatically load up the, the file format based on like the .prg extension. I want it to detect it as the 6502 thing and set up the sections and apply symbols. Um, it does look a little bit annoying here. So there's main, if not Ida, main. Okay, so that's for testing it. In this case, load file, set processor type, meta PC. Let's, uh, let's see how bad this would be. Actually, what is the PDF loader? How does that work? 
how is that associated with a PDF? Let me find a PDF here. Um, oh my God, I don't have a PDF. Uh, 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 Intel manual. This is probably a, a bad PDF because it's huge. We'll try and find the smallest one. I think like the, um, one of these uh, would be relatively small. Yeah, 600K. Still not tiny, but uh, better than nothing. The IDA Python API is mostly auto-generated using Swig. Oh, all right. Yeah, so this, um, is there like a PDF option? How? Hmm. 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 How much time would this save if we actually implemented this correctly? Uh, if I search for like IDA custom loader, custom IDA lo uh, weekend project, we need like a 20 minute project. Oh, and it's roll for rolls too, shit. Uh, <laughs> um, writing a loader, okay. Given access to the bytes of the file, determine if it's one you can handle. Um, you must export something called accept file. Function should return zero if it doesn't recognize it, non-zero if it does. Okay. Um, honestly, that doesn't seem too bad. Uh, holy shit, GitHub got flagged? Oh my god. Oh, oh that's no good. Oh my God. Uh, let's, let's keep going, ignore it. <laughs> wow. Maybe it's just this uh, directory here. I, I mean, I guess there's a lot of malware in here. That would make sense. Um, okay. Source code in the future. Oh, this is the loader. Oh, so they did, he did do it entirely in Python. And I'm hoping that I can just implement the accept file. Determine whether or not uh, the header looks like that. Okay. Load file. Once it has returned, we uh, can try and parse it by setting this stuff. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward. So this is being passed. Uh, thanks, Rolf. Thank you. <laughs> Not unsafe for you, huh? So we're gonna make a we're gonna make a file, uh, and we'll call this like Ida loader. Or we're gonna call this uh, a Folk six five zero two loader, and we're gonna set options file options so you can see those extensions. Okay. Okay, where did that go? Um, there we go. Folk loader.py. And I'm not going to set up like a true dev environment here. We're going to just use idle because I think that's going to be good enough. Return zero. Uh, return this. I can, I can return that. Uh, so this should happen on every file type. And then we're gonna go and we're just gonna whack this into the IDA folder, which will require admin. Uh, not a big deal. We'll just open an admin prompt and we'll uh, edit it there. Uh, open an admin explorer. And that should allow us to edit this with idle. And let's make sure we can save changes. We can, okay. So hopefully, I don't know if we need to start Ida every time. Let's uh, let's put Ida in our taskbar. Makes that a little easier. And hopefully it will always report that it can handle that of that type. Oh, nice, nice, nice. It's working. Import Ida API. Oh yeah. Now let's see. Will it fail again? Oh, there we go. Oh, we don't need to. We don't need to reload it. Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. Determine if this is a Falk 6502 image. If li.read 
8 is equal to bulk 6502. That's going to be our header. Um, then we return that. Otherwise, return 0. Bada bing. Okay, that'll fail. And then if we made a file, if we just hijack this bulk 6502, this should now... Hey! Okay. Uh, Folk 6502. Folk 6502 format. Okay. Uh, processor 6502. Okay, and this. And... Okay, so that's going to call load file. So in load file, it looks like it sets the processor type. And... Sets up all these segments and stuff. I'm hoping I'm hoping we can uh, kludge it together better there. Relocate the database. Uh, I don't think. Hopefully that function will get lazily invoked. So, uh, if it's reloading it as opposed to that, we just ignore request to reload. Okay. So we're gonna do this, and we'll steal this code. Sorry, Rolf. Okay, if it's reload, then print a uh, loaded file. I don't know what this has to return. Probably return zero, I'm guessing. And uh, handle loading a Falk 6502 image. Oh, we're going to be able to do, like, permissions and everything. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, add a segment. I don't think I need an EX segment, so we'll just do add segm. Uh, maybe we do have to do this. Start EA, end EA. Okay. This is going to be fancy. Um, and what does this return at the end? Return one. Oh. Okay. So let's see what this does. Yep, it's empty. Perfect. Um, and in this case, we want to set it to 6502. Uh, oh, okay. Let's, uh, what is it called then? M6502? Capital M6502? Okay, we can do that. M6502, M6502. Boom. It detected 6502. And looks good. So nothing to disassemble. No problem. Easy peasy. Now we just need to... Uh, we don't need that print. Um, set proc loader. Accept first. I don't even know if we need the set processor type. Uh, not sure why it's... Uh, yeah, because of that. But I will quit if you don't include it. All right. I'll include it. <laughs> So now all I need to do is I just need to make a, I just need to load, I think the remaining part of the file, uh, parse the header again, li.seq0, read the header size. Okay, so I think it's already seeked. So I'm going to add some bytes in here, some A's, and let's see if we add that segment. Segment is an item segment T. That's that. That's the end address. Bitness is that. Okay, let's see what happens when we do this. Um, and we'll say like memory contents is equal to a li dot read. Uh, read the remainder of the file at a code segment that starts at a thousand, and it should be based on len of memory contents, bitness, um, let's see what that is, segment t, ooh, um, I got python docs, come on, where's the search, is there a search, edge segment, segment t, this has bitness. What's bitness? Well, I have no idea. I'm going to hope that uh, this is probably ballpark good here. 
we'll add the, uh, we'll just call this mem. And yeah, let's see what happens here. So lend memory contents, I put an S after that, okay. This is actually uh, much better than I expected it to be. This is great. Um, loader T expected two arguments got one. So it expects me to know the length of the file here? Really? What was that type called? That was a um, li.read loader input, okay. So this is called a loader input. I don't know Python, so this is gonna be uh this is gonna be uh interesting. So read self and size, read bytes, size, tell. I don't know if size is the total size. We're gonna see what happens. Actually, let's see what happens if we just do like a big number. I don't know if that's gonna handle it. Uh, HB seg name, okay. That's easy. That came from, oh. Is that the actual segment name? What does this do? This needs a base, wait, start EA, end EA, cell, use 32, did this API change? Or is that some weird way of using Python that I didn't know was possible? Let's check out the Ida Python docs. Okay, that does take a segment structure. And in this one, this takes the base paragraph, the start address, the end, the name of the segment, and then the class. Okay, and then flags. All right, we'll call this add seg, or add segum. Paragraph zero, OX1000, end is OX1000 plus len memory contents. And then we're gonna have that, well, the name and the class. Uh, mem class we'll call code. All right, add a code segment. Nice, uh, bytes, uninitted. Okay, yep, and then I have to write those in. Uh, how do you do that? Create word, add entry, file, file to base. What's that? Load portion of a file into the database. Oh. Input source, position of the file, range of destination address, should, okay. I could also potentially just write it in. Is this the best way to go? Load a portion of the file. It'll include EA1 to EA2, range of the destination, make it enabled. Okay, so we'll do instead, uh, we'll add, we have to add the segment, I think. And then I can do li.seek8 and ida api.file to base. Oh, this is on the li, right? Um, okay, we'll pass in the li. We'll pass in the position in the file, 8. Oh, I guess it'll seek for us. We'll pass in 1,000, and then we'll pass in this, and then we'll pass patchable. Should it remember the correspondence of file offsets? Yeah, yeah, it should. 
All right. Ooh, file to base. Argument one of type L input T. I'm, I was guessing that's what it wanted. L input T, yup. Unless I'm supposed to do an li dot file to base. Let's see if that works. Okay, looks good. And what is, what is memory contents? Is this just the A's? Uh oh, where'd my file go? I hopefully have a print here. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Okay, so it did seek back to the start. Um, that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna change the header and we're gonna we're gonna clean this up in a better way here. We'll do uh, memory contents. This will just be li. Uh, this is an l input t. We want to search over here. Where is that? Input T? Loader input? Okay, file to base, yep. So load a portion, okay. And then at the position, and include that. Uh, size. We'll do dot size. Li dot size. And we'll do uh, payload Offset is equal to eight. Payload size is equal to li dot size minus payload offsets. Okay, and then this will do payload offset. This might actually be correct now. Nice. One, two, three, four, five A's. Or I guess it's more A's than that. It's uh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten A's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, nice. And that loaded correctly at 1,000. And it started treating that as code. Okay, that'll save us some time. And then I can grab the sim parse here. And I want to get a path of the file. So. We'll do, put this here. I'll say, wow. Say, uh, Ida load starts. Okay, then up here, this is for the symbol parsing and I'd need to get the directory. So I'm guessing I can get the file name, dot file name. Okay. So let's just print that out li.filename. I just want to see what format that is in, and then we're going to set the extension on it. In fact, I could maybe just include the symbols in the actual file. I could, like, prepend. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. So we're going to hack up some... We're going to have our build script... So that's going to create the non-copied CFG, or that's going to create the debug.labels. And then we will have, okay. Uh, I think I have that make file open already. So once this is done, then we're going to do a type, um, we can do a del of kernel. And then we'll do, and we'll let that fail. Uh, let's actually see what happens when we do this. Uh, clean all. Could not find, okay. I think this should silence that. Nice, and then we can just do this. So now the result of that won't matter. I don't think that was breaking things. 
I think Dell always returns success. It does. Okay. So we'll delete the kernel and we'll ignore if there's not a kernel there. And then I will do a type of debug.labels into kernel. So kernel is now that. Then I'm going to echo um, kern start into kernel. Uh, we'll append. Yeah, I know. It's a great file format. Type kernel. OK, kern start. And then we'll just put some like a number in there. All right, there you go. There's our unique identifier. OK, and then we'll type uh, kernel dot kernel.prg into kernel. And I don't know what that's going to do with line endings. Does anyone understand how line endings work? Because I do not. I don't know if it's going to CRLF everything in here. Um, type. Like, when you do the carrots, is that going to corrupt this image? Um... So like I'm typing out, the, I'm using type that's basically cat, and I'm appending to this file. Is this going to cause a line ending conversion? Because this is a binary file. Um, I want to make sure that the this identically gets appended to this file, the kernel, rather than it being like loaded up line by line. Okay, I think that does Unix style. Okay. Let me, I can just write a, I can write a quick test here. Test.foo. Okay, and here we'll just put, uh, actually we'll do, um, shit, do I have a good way of writing to a, a, a file? We can always switch to Python if it's an issue. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to echo folk 6502 into kernel, append the labels, And, oh, wow, that's putting a space and a, a new line? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Python. See you around, man. Try echo dash n. Uh, I don't think that works on Windows, right? Because we're on Windows here. Uh, we'll do this in Python. Uh, build kernel.py. Okay. And we'll just use the default Python interpreter. So I'll do um, with fd as open kernel write binary, fd.write b. Actually, we'll do Python 3. We're going to write uh, folk 6502. Then we're going to do uh, fd.write open debug.labels rb.read. Then I'm going to write this. Since we have no length, check. That, that'll do. And then I'll do fd.write of the kernel kernel.prg, rb.read. Okay. Uh, clean all. Python 3 not found. I think my Python is already Python 3. Um, as fd. Okay, so that should, now we have a predictable file format. There we go. Looks great. Yep, and that's just jammed in there as binary. So that's our uh, file format. <laughs> and that'll have symbols and everything in there. Okay. So I'll go grab that binary. Test app. Uh, now we have kernel. And then if that succeeds, we can just del. Uh, we can del 
kernel dot prg and debug dot labels. I just want to like have it leave a, a really clean setup here. So that will delete labels. We'll delete kernel and kernel dot prg. Okay, so we should only have kernel in here. Nice. Now if we copy this in. Uh, that's our loader. That's our symbol parsing. Okay. I'm going to try and clean up the desktop a little bit. I don't know what's going on in here. Delete. Oh, it was like freezing out. Okay. Whatever. And close this. Okay. We just have kernel now. And I'm going to switch these to be smaller icons. There we go. Nice. Kernel. Okay. Couldn't open that. Of course. Of course it couldn't open that. Um, uh, so that is RE and OS. That's our parser. Um, sim or yeah, symbol parser. We don't have to read that file, and then we'll just comment this out temporarily. Okay. Folk six five zero two in all caps. Nice. And that should load everything after the header. Okay. So if it starts with folk 6502, then it's a folk 6502 file. Otherwise, return zero. We handle that correctly. Then in this case, set that. If it's a reload, just do nothing. Um, these tabs being off is, is killing me. Oh my god, is there not a way to tab those in? Idle. Idle, you are a pain. Can I do block selects? No, I can't. Well. Just trying to clean up the code. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop. Okay. Don't care about the file name, so... Um, I think there's like a dot tell, right? Dot tell gets the current position. Okay. So we'll do li.seek0, seek to the start of the file. I think it's already seek to the start, but that just makes it clear. Then we're going to uh, skip over the falk6502 header, li.seek8. Yes, I know it's pointless to have both, but it, it's just... It's easier to read. Um, it's like more apparent what it's doing. So seek eight to skip over that. Uh, and more specifically, I'm gonna do, oh, that takes out wince. Uh, we'll do a uh, equals seek current. So we should be able to do that. Then this will be, the offset will be li dot tell. And this will be that minus that, okay. So then I'm going to do a, I guess now I read, I can just read the whole file. Yeah, we're going to just going to do that. Read the whole file. Uh, li.seek0 contents is equal to li.read big number. That, that'll do. Okay, then read the remainder of the file. So in this case, we have to find our delimiter and we have our magical delimiter, this. So we'll do uh, li.split, um, find. I think Python is find, right? And okay, yep. Ha oh, yeah, we want... Uh, Contents.find. What's that going to look like? 
I got a nun back. Maybe we overflowed an in. There we go. All right, looks nice. So in this case, it printed this, which is, I think that's the index of where it identifies it. So, and if it doesn't find it, we'll search uh, Python find. I think it returns negative one if it can't find it. Um, negative one otherwise, okay. So assert, um, so this will be the like, file start is equal to this, and this will be like file start, or we'll call this like ROM, ROM start delimiter, and we'll do this up here, ROM start delim is equal to this. Okay, assert that the ROM start is greater than or equal to zero. Good, and then we'll say that the payload offset is going to be equal to ROM start delimiter plus the length of the delimiter. And I think this will now load up the ROM at 1000. We're gonna skip over all of the symbols for now. 6502 loader, okay, can't concat, stern int, yeah, this is uh, ROM start. Okay, and that looks correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like to see, okay. So this will be um, find our ROM start delimiter. Okay, read the remainder of the file. And then add a code segment and load the ROM. Then we're going to apply symbols. And to apply symbols, all I need to do is, um, I need this code. Okay. Uh, for all of these in find all of contents, uh, after the Falk 6502 header, seek there, get the contents, then we're going to, uh, for the contents up until the ROM starts do a find all and apply those symbols. Set name, set name, set name. Um, there's another Ida thing. I forget what it's called. It's probably in here. IDC. Yeah, I think IDC will have it. I might have to do like an import star from IDC. I'm not sure. Set name. IDC.setName, we'll just do it explicit. Not rename it because it contains a bad character dot. Okay. Um. What, what, what changed here? Is this not working anymore? Let me see, kernel. Oh, we broke something. Oh, yeah, we need to add the eight because this seek. Okay, we'll do this. And that's fine because that is the AL, so whatever. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll just have this seek, uh, read the whole file, read the whole file. Then we're gonna apply these symbols. Um, hmm. 
find all contents, applying symbol at there. I guess I could put the eight there. See what happens. Applying symbol, yep. Those contain new lines. What if I do that? Is that complaining? Applying symbol that. Can't rename that because it has a bad character. New line. Make that greedy. Or non greedy. Come on. What? I'm confused. How is that working before? Find all. Get that. Set the name. I mean, we can go the we can go the cheesy route. Unindenting as control. Open square bracket. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna remember that, but hopefully during this stream, this stream will probably use it. That's exactly where I wanted it to be. <laughs> uh, in this case, we'll just do a name dot replace ours with this, and uh, and uh, I don't remember if this is in place or not. We'll see pretty quickly here. Okay, fine. All right, we have symbols now. I know I could do my regex correctly, but uh, yeah, we'll just do that instead. Okay. Got that, we apply all these symbols. And then I think I can have set name. There's like a set name EX that I think I can have it. Uh, or maybe I can pass it flags. Yeah, flags. Um, some of the SN constants. Match case. Dot SN. SN check auto. Uh, okay. Well, that's great. So we'll use this then. Uh, set name. So replace invalid characters with substitute. Yep. Uh, make it public. Make it weak. Auto generated. Um, fail if it contains invalid characters. If it's clear, all invalid characters will be replaced with that. Don't display a warning if it failed. I thought there was a way for it to like automatically rename it to. Well, whatever. We'll just set uh, flags. Oh, by default, flags are SN check. So we'll set the flags to no warn, which is now it won't warn on issues, and then it will substitute automatically. Okay. Clean. All right, now we have a now we have a loader that will just now we have a loader that will just work. Ah, son of a bitch. Uh, IDC. Nice. Hey, that looks good. And I'll get rid of the print as well because the print's actually going to slow us down quite a bit. All right, there we go. So that will load and apply symbols. Nice. Now we won't be uh, doing that every single time. So much better, much better now. Okay. 
that is a huge quality of life improvement to our uh, dev process. So we're going to make some changes to that loader because we're going to now make it aware of segments for permissions for actually loading that into uh, into the fuzzer. Because, yeah, we need to get this loaded into our fuzzer now. That's going to be our next step. Okay. Running it in a VM for Ida. Yep. Yeah, I just don't want Ida to have internet access. So, not a huge fan of that. Okay, so that's working in a nice, clean way. And now we can do much more rapid development. Big fan, and we get the symbols in there automatically. So we've got C tags is building in there. Now we just need to implement. We need to implement some of these functions, and we need to implement a loader. So let's go look at our functions right now. So I want to stub these out to have all of these crash. Um, so we'll do volatile int star. Uh, I'll actually make a, yeah, I'll just say, uh, hmm, yeah, we'll just have them deref, uh, foo is zero, volatile character, this one will write to one, two, three, four, five and then down here same thing six seven eight nine a okay so we have everything stubbed out and yeah so that is now good now i want to make our i think i need this to be aware of segmentation so let me find that um, non CFG, non copied. And I'm actually curious what happens if I mark one of these segments incorrectly. If I say code, or if I say data is read only, what happens? Okay, it just doesn't care. So before we had like a little header that told us the size of each of these sections. So I think we're going to do that again. Um, that went to main. That goes into the start file. I think I do want to give the load address and a couple other things. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to uh, tighten up these permissions. I mean, I could just load the whole thing as a read-writable, executable blob, but I, I don't like that too much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and strict make these more strict, so I'm going to make a... Uh, we'll make a header here that we load at header. We'll call it head type equals read only. And then here we'll have head that goes at file, our output file. The start location is S minus, uh, how many sections do we have? We have, was that eight sections, seven sections? So S minus seven times two. And the size will be equal to 7 times 2. I don't think the prints are necessary. Okay. Valid format at 16. Oh. Segment header doesn't exist. Perfect. So we'll go into ASM helpers. Segment header. Okay. Now I just need to define, um, I think it was like adder. Yeah. So we'll do address and then we'll just do the lengths of all of these sections. And the sections that we have in this case, we have a 
uh, code starts. I think code under starts. That's undefined. I just need to say, I think def define equals yes. Um, code begin? No. What was it? Uh, get diff. Uh, how did we define that before? It's in this file. Code size. Yeah, yeah. Code size. So we start with the code. I guess we have the startup stuff too, so we'll uh, we'll whack these in for all of them. Doop, 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 doop. doop. Okay. So now all of the sections will have log. The header doesn't actually go into the um, main segment. So we'll have the code size, or we'll have the startup size, the low code size, the once size, followed by code, ro data, data and BSS. Startup, low code, once code, RO data, data, BSS. Okay. Undefined. Uh, yes, I need to import those. And I think it's just dot import. Yeah. Uh, we'll get BSS, we'll get once size, low code size, start size, is it? Oh, startup. BSS size. Oops. BSS size. Low code. Wasn't that a name of one of these? Low code define equals yes. Mm. Oh, is that because it's optional? Bye, problem solved. Now we only have six of these. Yep. Okay. So we no longer have a low code. Start up in once. Uh, I guess I can make these non-optional. Yeah. So start up once code. Okay, low code. Then I also want to, I think I want to give it the stack start and the stack size and the zero page starts, and the start address. So main start, I want that. Main start. This will be like the load base. Main start. And what, what is it with these spaces? Define equals yes. Okay. So we have the main start. We'll get the ZP start. Stack. Start. Stack size. So the main start, the ZP start, the stack start, and the stack size. That's fine. Then just don't use Windows. I only have IDA for Windows, and it works a lot better on Windows than all other platforms. Head, 
header overflows head by six bytes. Yep, that's because this is now 10 entries, 10, 10. All right, so now we have a fancy file format. Try Ghidra. I don't want to use Ghidra for this because it's just uh, I'm a little bit more comfortable with Ida for this project. And once again, Ghidra works better on Windows than it does Linux or OS X. So I would probably still use a Windows VM with Ghidra. Uh, start minus that, head times that. Okay, I'm happy with those. And... All right. So I think the first thing that it does when it loads up is it will set the stack, the 80, zero, and it will put that in at the zero page start. So that's why I added the zero page in there as well. So I should be able to relocate this entire thing and it will automatically just work. So first of all, let's load this up in IDA. This is no longer going to work correctly um, because we added this extra header stuff in here, but I just want to inspect and make sure that that header is looking sane. Yes, uh, we've got a thousand, which is the load base. We've got the zero page start. We've got the stack start. We've got the size of the stack. We've got the size of the startup. Okay, and all the other regions. Nice. Okay, and then this is the start of code here. I think, uh, oops. A280. That will probably be the start of code. What do we have here? I could have made an array. Uh, one, main start, CP start, stack start, stack size, startup once code, RO data, okay, data, and BSS. And then this is the, the code. Yep. Okay, looks great. So we just have to skip that header. We'll actually parse some of those fields out in IDA before we load the ROM. So this is gonna be, um, how do I wanna do this? Payload offset is there. So this will be the like header, get the header. Header is equal to uh, payload. ROM start plus the length of that. Plus, and then we're going to seek to, and we'll just do this. Uh, ROM start is equal to this. We'll go from ROM, or yeah. ROM start colon ROM start plus OX, was it 10? I think it was 10 fields. Uh, where was that at? Yep, 10 different fields. So we have 10 fields here times two. Okay. And then I can do uh, load base and all of our fields. Got load base, zero page, start, stack, start, stack, size, startup, size, startup, size, once, size, code, size, And that's going to be equal to struct dot unpack one two three four five six seven eight. Uh, I can just do ten ten h. That 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and we're gonna load at load base and the size, okay, and then the main is gonna be equal is equal to the ROM start plus payload lin payload. Uh, okay. Code start. Go get the code limits. We've got the code start. So we're going to load at load base for load base that here at code start load base. This will then be code size will be equal to the contents, the length of the contents minus the code start. ROM start. Okay, load base plus code size. I don't know if that's inclusive. Let me find that. Add second. M and address should be higher than the start address. You seg null. If it's lower than that, it'll fail. If end is that. End address. I'm guessing that is supposed to be probably minus one. Then file to base. Payload, payload, contents. Oh, that plus, no, this is of ROM start plus header. Man, I'm typing everything today. Okay, so we loaded that at 1,000. That looks good. Uh, we applied all of those things. Nice. Okay, file to base there. Let's make sure that the last byte is there. It's actually really hard to tell if there's supposed to be another byte afterwards. Try and find better documentation. Add segment, NDEA. This address will belong will not belong to the segment. This address will not belong to the segment. Okay, so it's not the ending address, so it's not inclusive. And then in this case, that's gonna be the same, file to base. EA2, range of that, we'll include that, dot, dot, okay. This is probably more correct then. Yep, there was one extra byte there at B. Sweet. So I also want to add the zero page as well in here for as a segment. So and the stack. Okay. Uh, stack start minus stack size. So the stack starts at that address and is that okay. So I need, I have stack start and stack size, and I'm just going to throw in here as well, uh, zero page size. Obviously that's gonna blow over all of those things. These need to be 11s. Nice. And ZP size. Is that. 11, 11, I think we're good. Okay. Startup run, nice. There's exit, main. Yeah, we got like all the symbols working now. Okay. 
11 of those. That's loading the correct code. And now I just want to set up those. I want to set up those segments. So we'll add a segment. And I'm going to say it's BSS, even though it's not. I don't know if that's valid. Um, BSS. Oh, stack. Yeah, I'll do BSS, and then we'll do stack for the stack. Why the 6502? Got some Commodore 64 stuff to look at? No, it's just uh, it's just the simplest architecture to write a lifter for. That's the only reason. It just is trivial to write a lifter for it. So we're going to add a uh, zero page. Name, class. Okay. That's the only reason. Zero page start, and then... Zero page start plus zero page size. So now we'll hopefully get a zero page. Okay, we did. Oh, that's cool. Uninitialized and unexplored. Register bank. ZP last. Okay. Neat. So now these are storing to SP. Nice. SRAG, reg save. Okay, so we have a little bit better uh, symbolizing on those now. Um, nice. Now let's add the stack. To add the stack, this is just going to be at stack, stack, stack. This is at the stack start minus stack size all the way up to stack start. Boom. Okay, so we have the zero page, and then we're going to load the address of the stack. We're going to write that in there. We're going to write that to SP and the byte after it, which is also part of SP. Ida just doesn't know that it's a word. Now it does. Not that it really matters, but let's just see if that cleaned it up. SP, SP plus one. Yep. Okay, and then there should be a stack in here. All uninitialized. If I hit a D, yeah, they'll break it up. And that should go to 7 FFF. Nice. So we also have the stack. So this is the state that memory will look like. And we're now using a zero page at hex 80 offset. Uh, technically, I didn't want to save that. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. We'll just nuke it. Okay. Um, where can I read about lifters? I'm having uh, trouble finding out what a lifter is. So a lifter is something that like translates from an architecture, in this case, like 6502, into some other language. So typically, it's an intermediate language or an intermediate representation, an IL or an IR. Uh, but often it can also be, you can lift directly to another architecture by like transcoding or whatever you would want to call that, like translating the um, uh, directly from one architecture to another. Um, but there are, there are so many different ways that you can actually do that. Um, so, but yeah, lifting is typically reading machine code and then trying to um, put those bytes into some generic representation. What are you lifting to? I'm lifting to my own IL. So it's, I call it folk IL or fail. <laughs> so it's, it's just my own custom little IL. Okay, so we know that works. Okay, got a bunch of Burks. Okay, looks good. All right, uh, I wanna save a copy of that folk loader at some point here soon before I lose that. But now we can actually implement the loader in our uh, in our rust. So over here we can go and we want to read that input file. In this in this case it's called a uh, kernel. So read the folk rom. So we have all of that included in here and then I'm going to do a let 
payload is equal to, we're going to slice up, uh, we'll actually do fulcrom.split at, what do we make that label? Build kernel.py, this. So we're going to split at this dot nth one dot unwrap. So that will get the payload. And then we're just going to parse out that header here. And in this case, what is the header here? So get the load base. And these will only need to be zeros. I could technically put, I think, I think mutable references to slices implement IO read. Let me do uh, payload.read2. Use standard IO read. Let's see if that works. Uh, whoops. Where's our code at now? Here. Um, split expected a. Okay. Um, really? Oh, that's uh, bytes. And oh yeah, Rust really doesn't like. Uh, you can't do a split on um on a byte slice, I don't think. Let me see. Split. That's on iterators. I think they're in the process of adding one. Is that there's a find maybe? First find partition at what's that? Okay, that's a new thing. Partition dedupe. Rotate split at split first starts with okay, so I'll have to do I think I'll have to do um dot windows dot um what is it there's a way to like windows this implements uh just iterator i think and then there's a way to get the length do i want to do find searches for an element that satisfies a predicate. Okay, dot find where x is equal to that. Man, it's really annoying. Um, payload index is equal to that. This will be the like um, constant, uh, what do we call this? Romdalim. Slice v8 equal to that. We're going to look for windows with the length of that. We're going to find ones that are there. And I think I can unwrap. And that will give the index some terms, some elements. Uh, there's a better way of doing that, I think. Can I do a dot count on it afterwards? Maybe. Oh, thank you so much for the host. Hell yeah. Uh, find position. Ah, there we go dot position and unwrap that so and then we'll have let mute payload is payload is equal to the bulk rom dot dot payload idx 
uh, payload idx plus rom delim dot len print load base is x load base and we'll just panic on that and hopefully this builds and we'll get a panic load base is 4146 okay we're off um go through all the windows of that size position plus that dot length load base oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah payload Okay, so I think this is correct. Yeah. All right, so let's see if we can then do a payload.read2. Use standard IO read. And then that needs to read into a, a field. Mute temp. Uh, let temp equals OU82. Make that mutable. I think you can read from slices. That will script the load base. Good. Okay. So you can do that, which means that I could do a uh, read exact instead. And we'll just make a macro. Macro rules uh, read. And then the. Honestly, we don't even need args. We'll just do get temp, oops, get temp, read exact, then we'll do a uh, u16 from le bytes ah! of temp. From le bytes of temp. Okay. And now I can do a read as u size. I'll put some more friends here. Here. There you go. Okay. Nice. That just cleans it up a little bit. So now we just have to read off all of those fields. So we have the load base. We have the zero page start. We have the zero page size, stack start and size, stack size, uh, startup size, once code, RO data, data BSS. Okay. Startup size followed by the once size code size, RO data size, data size, and the BSS size. This should be 11 fields, 12 fields. Is it 12 fields now? No, it's 11. Uh, zero page. Okay, load base. Start size, stack start, stack size, startup size, once size, code size, RO data size, data size, BSS size. Awesome. Get the contents that need to be loaded. That's just going to be the remainder. So that's payload.length, which has been consumed up. Uh, and we just want the whole thing. So add memory for payload.length, get a pointer to the base address. Now we just want to load them up in order. Okay. Set permissions for the startup section. This is going to be exec only, I think. Execute only. And this is uh, startup size. We can make a macro for these too. Uh, define section. Perms expert, um, size expert. It's just going to be this. 
And then this will take the size, 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 perms. Okay. Define section, the, we want to define the startup size and it's going to be a perm exec. Nice. Once size, this is going to be, um, I honestly have no idea what the once section is. I'm going to say perm right, perm raw. When we don't know perm right, perm raw is safe. Uh, code size. Execute only. Then we have the RO data size. Obviously, that's read only. Perm read. Data size. That's going to be uh, write and raw. And then we'll have the BSS size, which will be write and raw as well. So startup once code RO data data BSS. And that should line up with our original configuration file. So everything that goes to main, startup once code RO data data BSS. Once is technically read write. Okay, then we write everything in. So we write the payload at the load base. Then we create the stack, uh, create a software stack that is going to be at uh, start stack start minus stack size for stack size. Set the permissions at, uh, and then we'll do this stack base. Let stack base is equal to this. Um, add memory stack base for stack size. Stack start minus stack size. Good. Set the permissions at the stack base for the stack size as write and raw. And we'll make sure that that is equal to the stack size. And then uh, write in a pointer to the point to the software stack at the zero page address. And that will be at zero page start. Uh, allocate room for the heap. Yep. Set PC to start at, yeah, we'll end up configuring these. Set up the stack to FF, that is correct. Um, set the PC to start at entry. In this case, it's actually the code or uh, what is it load base start at the entry did we make a null page create memory for the entire image 6502 stack and the zero page so now we want to make these so the zero page we're going to put at zero page start for zero page size And that will be zero page start for zero page size. Make sure that it's equal to zero page size. Okay, and then here that's going to write the um, stack base. No, this is actually the stack start as U16. Write in the zero page, start and size, set the permissions at the start for size, write and raw, create a stack. This is going to be at the stack, stack base. Oh, we already have that. Oh, this is the 6502 stack. Um, from 100 hex to, for 100 hex bytes, uh, we're going to say the 6502 hardware stack, and that should be correct. And allocate room for the heap at alloc base. Okay. Okay, 94. Stack starts. 
Okay, try into we're not using anymore. 71 address, so we'll do underscores on these. And then everywhere that uses adder, underscore. Okay. This is saying we could not write to the zero page start. And yeah, of course we can't because it wasn't set up yet. Set up the sections, write everything in. Create a software stack. Okay. I think this is right. That's not a very good sign. This actually might be fine. It might be self modified code. Failed to read instruction. Uh, is it due to our mutations? Let's see what happens here. Okay. Failed to read instruction. Um, we set that to load base. Perm exec. Maybe the once stuff needs to be executable. Nope. Define section. That will set the permissions at that address for perms. Okay. Print creating section at this adder and then this will do adder plus size is that to 1017 load base Set that to load base. Stack start, okay. Stack base, stack size, stack base, stack size. What is happening there? And I can stringify, I think, creating section, do like 10. Stringify size. Uh, I guess we'll make this 16. Uh, went to sleep yesterday when you were trying to debug timeouts from your fuzzer. It was uh, What was the issue in the end? In that case, that was due to us handling ungetc incorrectly, but we did still find uh, null DRF and C tags. So we did have one issue with that, but it wasn't that big of a deal. We actually... Uh, we were able to pull through there just fine. Okay, failed to read instruction. Let's take a look at this. SP folk IL 6502 source this print. Okay, see what happens. Okay, so it is it is just fine. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to point this to main, and I think I actually want to write like a symbol resolver. I think that would be like really convenient if I wrote that. So if I made like a little symbol parser, then I could get these symbols automatically. Hmm. I don't know, we'll just hard code one temporarily. We'll just see, I just wanna get this up and running. Copy the kernel in. Okay, startup, that goes to main. Honestly, we can just have code start executing at uh yeah, we'll do we'll do main. Set PC to this. Okay. Trying to access F04. Um yeah. Okay. Nice. F04, what do we have to implement? We can close all this stuff now. Okay. So that is a pledge. So pledge. Nice. 
I think it's always I think our main's always gonna be at the same address as well. So that should be good. So pledge is a open BSD, I think only routine that allows you to say it kind of restricts your your permissions. Um, and it's actually really cool. So all I care about is the success case. Upon success, a zero is returned. Okay, so pledge, we will return zero. Um, do nothing. This is used to depriv the process since we're not emulating a full kernel. This is pointless. So we just can return success. Okay, that will build and then we just run our code again. All right. We've got an axis of 98. Um, and that's going to happen in 4029. I'm guessing this is like a printf. F right. So we're in F right. And that's accessing 98. If we look at 98, 98 is something in the zero page. Um... And that is used 9899 push AX pointer one. Huh. Huh. So basically there's there are these like once routines that get called. So this is just setting up the stack pointer, which we do. We write the stack pointer, which is uh to this location SP, which is the start of the zero page. That's what we do. Um, right in here. So we set up the software stack, we add memory, we set the permissions, and then we write at the zero page start, we write a reference so we can skip that code. Remember, we're not executing from start, we're executing from main um, because this zero BSS is fine. This is just gonna zero out the BSS. Um, then init lib, this does some self-modifying code. And I don't handle self-modifying code in my environment here and thus I can't um, I can't call this function but what this does is it this is for like invoking the like a knit segment and I'm guessing printf probably registers something in that like once or a knit segment um, and print printf is going to use that and we're getting a crash because we're accessing 98. And 98 is indeed valid memory in the zero page. Um, it looks like it's probably a pointer. So let's take a look at the source for printf. So in CC65, lib source, um, none. Yeah, printf. Let's search for printf. Yep, and it is, oh my god. It's implemented in assembly. Okay, so we are crashing at 4029, which is in F right, which is two sudi vax. Uh two two s unsigned div ax two stack. I'm guessing that's what that's doing. Wait, is that where we are? Crash there. Oh, we have a different binary. Let me let me grab the latest binary. I'm glad we have this new loader set up. Oh. Yeah, and that's gonna load the IDB because we saved it. Having this new loader makes it so much easier. Just drag it in and get symbols and everything right away. So okay, the address that we're crashing at is here. Hopefully it's correct. Okay, that looks better. This is in get opt. So in get opt, it's gonna load these two bytes. So let's go see in get opt what it does. E message. 
What is e-message? Uh... Okay. C tags are dot. The way you remember your code in terminal location is magnificent. Yeah, some days it's good, some days it's bad. Um, today, today's been pretty solid. Get opt. So we've got get opt in here. So the first thing this does is it deref's place. And place is a uh, static to e message. And e message is just okay. So that's a that's a pointer that can change. It initially starts out as just a uh, an empty quote. So is that place? Deref place. If it's not, if it's not, then it skips everything pretty much, or it skips a lot of stuff until it comes down here. I'm guessing that's what that's derefing. Push ax load that. Hmm. Sadly, like. I feel like we would have symbols there, but we don't. We've got like all these temporaries and something is supposed to probably get populated here. Push AX, push AX, LDA, what's pointer one, store pointer one. 98, 99. printf stores to it I could see what regbank is it's probably regbank I bet that's all these seem pretty related so let's check out where regbank is used okay oh this is the zero page ah stack pointer sreg reg save pointers, and then reg bank. Register bank. What is that? Reg bank size. E0 page. Hmm. Zero page dot ink. Zero page dot ink. Okay. Uh, file that imports the zero page locations and then reg bank. Size of the register bank, amount of the zero page, you, okay. Reg bank size is equal to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's part of the register bank. What is supposed to go in there? And why would it read from the register bank before writing from it? it maybe it's just saving it. Reg bank. Hmm. Register bank. I need to figure out what the register bank is. Well, no files match it. Okay. Reg bank. Swap. I think it like grabs things out of it. Argument list pointer. Import reg bank. I'm guessing I can just zero it out. What's it going to do? So it's going to store those to the reg bank. These are also part of the register bank. I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna say that it's safe for us to 
right into that register bank. So we're going to initialize the register bank. Um, initialize the register bank to zero. Zero page start plus OX. What was it? 95, uh, 94, so 14 plus OX 14. We're going to write in one, two, uh, we can just do this, a slice of U8s for six bytes. Make sure it's equal to six. So initialize the register bank to zero. I think it's fine. <laughs> okay, now we have a access of 5C01. And that has a pointer to 5B8E. I think that's just safe. That's just going to be some global and get opt. Um, get opt XRFs to this. So those look fine. Is this RO data? No, that's, that's, uh, okay, those are globals. But I don't, I don't want to set everything as initialized. I want to be pretty strict about it. So I'm going to just specifically say that those, uh, have read and write access. Allow access to some get opt globals. And this is... 5C00, two bytes, perm, read. Oops, make sure it's equal to two. And we load at 1000, so that's 4C00. And we can get the um, load base plus that. Okay. That is clean. Set permissions, make that readable. We're just gonna have a bunch of these as we kind of go through. Uh, hmm. What's the easiest way to do this? I mean, I could set, I could set the data section as initialized. We'll try it. So this will be perm read. That'll fix all of those in one fell swoop. Okay. All right at foo six. So that's just running for a while. We could also set the BSS to read write. And that would mean the once is write and raw, RO data is read only, and then the BSS, uh, technically the BSS, I, I mean, it could, it could know that something is nulled out. I'm going to still set it to raw. That's fine. We're not hitting it. We'll keep the permissions strict and then we'll relax them if we need to. So we're accessing foo six. That is an open. So we're getting an open request here. Okay. So yeah, the first thing we're getting is an open. Let me see if I can do a printf. I don't know if that's gonna work. Come on. Ah, this window's all like broken over here. Uh, called the undefined function. Standard IO. Okay. I'm curious if this will cause write to get hit first, which would be FOA, failed to read instruction. Uh, is that because the stack is broken? 
Oh, is printf succeeding? F flush standard out. I bet printf is succeeding. It's just not getting flushed. Maybe. Failed to read instruction. Okay, let's put those prints in and see where it's getting stuck. Uh, 4040 JSR or 4640. Oh, X this. Oh, we got to get the right kernel version. Uh, 4640. So that's doing a JSR to this. JSR to byte to 4C. Printf. Um, load a pointer two. That's in the zero page. What? Why would that jump there? That makes no sense. Let's take a look. Dev CC65 source printf. Parameter size, okay. That's gonna call vprintf, so that's what we're probably in. Pointer two. Other zero page cells. F count. JSR, call the output function. JSR to here. Oh, does this use self-modifying code? Oh. Stuff from out data. JSR there. So that's in the data section. And that is a jump zero. Yep. Push out data, character arguments. <sighs> Why? Why? Why do you do that? Is that really necessary? Like, why don't you just do an indirect jump? Call out funk. Call out funk. That's storing. This is what? 
Get the address of out data. Or LDA that, I and Y. Get the output function from the output description and remember it. Oh. Mm. Yeah, man, if they use self-modifying code like this, this is going to be a big pain in the ass. I mean, I could I could hook printf such that it doesn't get used. What what is this? This is actually is this printf? Under under printf. And that's getting get the output function from the output description descriptor and remember it. And that is out data. JSR pop AX. How many of these things are going to use self-modifying code? I mean, I'll, I'll replace printf. I should be able to hopefully grab that up here. Uh, const character format. And have this. I don't know what number we're on now, so we're just going to go to 20. Uh, we got to... Oops. We got to build this. That should override the uh, printf in the library. Okay, so that's doing a crash at FO20, of course, due to this printf. So I'm hoping that I can do VA args. Um, sorry for the questions. Should have answered before. Why are you lifting to an IR? Uh, do you have a symbolic execution engine? Uh, no, I have a JIT. So I have I have something that can um, JIT out the IL into a very efficient. Oh yeah, and I need to parse this string. Maybe I can do a sprintf. Um, so I have a, a JIT that allows me to um and we'll see what we can do here oh we don't have the va args uh vs printf we'll do vsn printf size of buff but yeah I, I take the il and then i jit it out to uh vector instructions avx 512 it's something i call vectorized emulation it's a super high performance uh emulation technique And lifting to an aisle just makes it so much easier to optimize and work for uh, work on. So I think that will take the VL, and then I just need to do a VA end here, and then int ret ret is equal to this. I think printf returns an int. Let me double check. And three printf, yeah, it does. So ret is equal to that, return ret. VSN printf. I mean, technically, I, well, yeah, I guess I need to call the printf to use the args. And let's see if we can get this to build. Uh, VA list, that is in standard arg. Okay, eight, undefined n. Oh yeah, because we don't know the length. How do we do this? How? Um, 
We would have to like modify the stack directly here. Hmm. Just due to the VA arguments, I don't know how many, I don't know how many arguments there are without parsing it. Because I need to know the number of arguments. And there's no VA start or VA list. Uh, is there a way in C pass to another function? I don't think you'll search for that. Passing. Okay. Can't do it directly. You can do a VA list. but you have to know how many arguments there are. Is there a function like uh, print, uh, oh, VA args? Yep. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Um, I can't call VS printf. VA copy. Wow. That's pretty fancy. So let's see what's in standard IO. Um, printf, scanf. Hmm. Sadly, I don't know how many arguments there are unless I parse that format string, and I have no way of parsing the format string. Oh. How hard would it be for me to modify that to use an indirect branch? Uh... I could try to change the 6502. You can do a jump. You can do a branch indirect. Jump subroutine. That takes an absolute. Oh, maybe you can't. You can do a jump. You can do a jump indirect. So... I'm pretty sure if I did a if I did a jump indirect and then I populated the stack manually, that would be the same as a JSR. And then I would get printf. I think that's going to be the easiest way forward here. Unfortunately, So this ends up crashing because it can't lift the instruction, which makes sense because it's in a data section. So I think all of, our, all of our code lives in, yeah, execute only sections. So it has no way of reading that. And then I'm just gonna have to make a custom library. That's not too bad. We, we can do this pretty pretty fast, I think. Uh, we'll go into D dev CC 65 source. We just need to learn how to build the standard library. Probably isn't too bad. Um, uh, lib source. Mm, is there a make file in here? Make none. Make clean none. Okay, so that's building our nun library. Hopefully we got a nun.lib. If we do, then we're fine. Yeah, we did. Uh, nun.lib. Lib. Nun.lib. Okay. 
see if Explorer, yeah, it's not gonna let me explore on that. That's fine. We'll just go to the CC65 source. Uh, lib none. Okay. So I will pass in in our make file. We will use our custom. Where's our make file at? Uh, oh, we don't have it open. So make file. This we're now gonna pass in a. We wanna pass in target none, and then lib. Uh, let me check out the args for this. Help. No target lib, so we don't want it to link with our target library. Then we set the target to none, and then we're going to pull in a library. We'll link with a... So this will fail catastrophically. Which is over here. So that'll fail because all of these are undefined. Now we should be able to say, use this library, none.lib. Okay, so that works. So now we're using a custom version of the libc, which means I should be able to go into here and where it does a callout func. And the way that works is, okay. So we have a couple things that jump to those. So that's setting them up. That's jumping to it. So all of these, this is gonna push to call it func plus one. We're gonna have it put to there and that plus one. So now it's storing the address here. So this is a word zero. We're gonna call this call it func adder. And that will store to the address there and to there. So that will remember the output function and then all these things that call it are now incorrect. So anything that calls it, we want to simulate a call and to simulate a call we're going to do a um we need to push the how does that work you push push pc plus two so how do i get pc okay so when things jump to call out func, that means they want to invoke. So we'll make call out func here. And this will just have a SDA uh, FFEF. Yeah. So we just need to build our library. We got a lot of prompts open now. Uh, make clean none. Uh, technically, that looks like that worked. Then we build our project. And now we should have a crash with it jumping to FFEF. Yep, FFEF. So then what I want to do is I want to get the... I want to do an indirect branch, and I think the only one I can do is just a jump. Jump indirect. Is there any way for me to jump other than that? There's an absolute jump and a jump indirect. And jump indirect, that takes in... What is the indirect encoding again? I think that's literally an... That's the same as absolute, right? Uh, 6502 address modes. OK, 
Okay, indirect jump contains a 16-bit address which identifies the location of another 16-bit address. Okay, simple. So here we're going to do a jump to call out func adder. So that's going to be wrong because we're not, uh, this will cause it to probably return to the wrong location because we don't push the return address. But I just want to see if this quote unquote works. Okay, that, then run. Uh, jump without absolute. Oh, I've never seen an indirect jump yet in my IL. Huh. Okay. Bind, that's for Burks. RTI, RTS. I could also push it onto the stack. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do, we'll handle a jump. And a jump can have an absolute operand. Can you do else if let syntax? No, I don't think so. So I think I'm gonna have to switch this to match operand. Then in the absolute encoding, this will be this. Otherwise, in the um, indirect, Then we do this, and then everything else, panic, invalid, jump, operand. That shouldn't be hittable. Panic, indirect. Okay, match operand. And then this, indirect, what does that take? I think I can just do load. is equal to load, and then I can do a graph.bind adder. And what did we do for RTI? Okay. So in the case of a jump indirect, we'll do, we'll load the address, we'll branch the address, and then we'll go to the next explore point. Okay, invalid operand type for load. Um, load. Operand this, indirect, val. I think it's already loaded. Uh, indirect, that has the mem read. So that has the address to jump to. If it's an adder, in the case of an indirect, we're going to mem read at that to get the location. Yeah, I think it's just value. Okay, now we're crashing on an FOOA. That's probably going to be a right. Hey, there's a right. Return count. And there's our there's our printf right there. So now I just have to build this. So obviously this is not going to return up correctly, but but when it does, uh, things should be all good here. Uh, we've got a six access. It's on an open. Well, how are we getting there? Does printf call open? I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. I feel like it would not call open. All right, who calls open? F open, yep. And who calls this?
there's no way that this worked. Jump call out func address. Call out func adder. Store that, store that. Oh, it does work because they're doing a JSR to callout func. And callout func just jumps to here. And the JSR caused that to be, uh, it'll ret up to that location. Okay, so this is, this is actually correct. Well, uh, well, I'll be damned. Okay, so that's actually hitting a real open request. Um... Well, I'll be damned. So we have our right uh, getting hit here. So, well, that's some hot shit. All right. So when right gets hit, what I want to, I think what I'm going to do uh, temporarily, is I'm going to comment this out. And... Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a right implementation here. And that will do uh, an O3. So this should trap up. So this should VM exit due to a trap and then we'll get like an unhandled trap message. Uh, FO6. Uh, we didn't build it. Okay. Is this HTML? Yes. Yep, this is HTML. Uh, trap zero zero vector lane two. Okay. What? What? That's a realloc. Reading instruct. Oh, oh, that's okay. So these have moved around some of the offsets. So I need the. Let me get the. Let me get the main adder from under main. Under main. Okay, so. Yep, that overflows that. Uh, GVim config this. We have 12 fields here now. Okay. We gotta fix our Ida script. This now is 12. This is 12 and we have the main adder. Okay. And then the next thing we have to do is this will get main adder is equal to read as you size. And then we'll set PC to main adder. Now we're cooking. Okay, done. Okay, so we should get a trap three. Uh, crash on a... DREF 6. Really, are we not seeing this trap? Really? Um, if we don't have this, this should fail to build, right? Yeah, I couldn't find right. Weren't we hitting right? Isn't that what... Uh, when we had that, this was hitting right, wasn't it? Save that. That was hitting the DREF. Oh, six. Oh, we had the printf up here. Printf, whoop. We'll just do that. Okay. 
That makes sense. Oh, and we had a return here. Okay, so we'll comment this out. Comment that out. We'll put this back in. I think I built it there, didn't I? Maybe I do need that F flush. Oh, there we go. There's our trap. Woo! Okay, so when we call a function and we pass in three different arguments, where does the second argument go? Does that go on the stack uh, in fast call? Let me try. I guess we can look at C tag main. I'm guessing that's going to use fast call. So we can check. Uh, this is soft serve 6502 test kernel. Okay, everything's loaded. Looks good. Got main here. Nice. That's going to. Okay, so it's going to pass. A and X are going to have the arguments, and then it's going to push AX. So we push those onto the stack. So we want to read. And is that a soft stack use there? I think it is. Push AX. That's going to get SP. And SP will point to the free slot. So we want to take SP, we want to add one, we want to deref it, unless they use a uh, post index stack. Um, I'm not actually sure if that's what they're going to do. Let me check out who calls write. So this, yep, load A and X and then pushes AX. Push AX. That's going to get the address of the stack. And it's going to update it. OK. Let's see. So we'll have, we're going to make a comment here. And we'll say that um, we'll do like this. Uh, writes are handled in asmhelpers.s. And we'll trap into the emulator. Okay, then here we'll say, otherwise, if the value is equal to a three, then we're going to get the um, read the software stack. This will be vm dot mmu dot read caused vm exit vert adder I guess I need those stacks the stack addresses all right I need the zero page start well we know it's at hex 80 right now we're gonna hard code it we'll fix it later um, read at hex 80 for two bytes and I can't remember I think my read uh, I think I have to pass a buffer yep um, let SP is equal to uh, OU82, make this mutable, mute SP is equal to 2, assert, okay, and then at the end, cause VM exits handled all VMs. Uh, and we want to set, I guess we want to get, right is also going to give a length in the next field, okay. So we'll just uh, return, we'll just panic here. Uh, read with SPX, let SP is equal to U16 from LE bytes, SP as U size. So now we have the address of the stack. We can get rid of the prints in here, just to quiet things up a bit. Okay. Uh, read with SP that, 
And now the question will be, so this will be arg2, 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 arg2. Now we're going to read that sp to arg2. arg2 is an x. So we're going to see if this address looks sane. I'm guessing it's not. I think we have to add one. Maybe not. Maybe they do use a... Uh, maybe their software stack, they... Um... Oh, 03. That's whoop and an A. Okay, that's that's definitely correct. Okay. So, and then we'll get the arg3. So this is the um, pointer. Uh, handles right int fd uh, buff len. Uh, ret this returns uh, an int. Okay. So we'll get the that, and then we'll get a arg3. So that is the buff. And then I can take sp plus 2, and this I can get the len. Buff, 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 len. So the buff is there, the len is this. And that's going to be five, hopefully. Uh, length one, ooh. Really? Uh, push AX. Push a o. L e a a zero s p. Add with carry s p that. Load a four. Oh, it's probably doing one byte at a time. Yep, it's probably doing one byte at a time. So now we can get uh, read the software stack address, uh, get the buffer from the stack. This is arg2. Get the length from the stack. This is arg3. OK, and then read the actual data. And here we'll do let mute temp is equal to OU8, let's just say 16. And then we'll assert that assert that len is less than temp.len. Less than or equal to that. Um, then we're going to read from buff into temp dot dot len. Make sure that's equal to length. And then this will print the bytes that we read. In this case, it will be uh, that we wrote. In this case, it will be vm dot mmu dot. Yeah, this will be um, just standard slice from. UTF-8, or standard string, from UTF-8 of temp dot dot len dot unwrap. Print the data to the screen. And then we're going to update the return. Um, here we go. Return out bytes red. In this case, we'll do the len, or 
bytes written. X and A, and then we'll say that we handled all VMs. Come on. Uh, hmm. What are we printing? Whoop. We're printing whoop. For some reason, it's not continuing on. Right. Compare x with 0. If it's not equal to 0, then here. Compare with 1. If it's equal to 1, uh, compare with 1. If x is not equal to 0, then we go here. Otherwise, we go here. That's the failure case. In the success case, it should be equal to 1. When and that, shift 8. I think compare is on A, right? A with M. If it equal... That should be correct, right? Compare x. In this case, x will be 0. If it's not equal to 0, it's always a failure. Yep, and it, it should be not equal to 0. Lend and OXFF shift right to by 8. feel like for some reason our return value is off. Read, read all this stuff. Print x a and I can do vm.get reg caused vm exits register x a, so you want x to be 0, and we want, uh, oops, we want x to be 0, and we want a to be 1, and I, th I think they are, yeah, why is that stuck, put c, okay, updates that stuff, Ink SP4, Eddie YSP. Sterling. TYA. Do a write. That one, it's just, I guess, ignoring it. JSR, compare X with FF. Compare that with FF. Otherwise, it was successful. X is 0, and A is 1. Isn't that what we want? Ah, come on. X is 0. And then A is 1. And it should go down here. Um... Oh, I need to clean up the stack, don't I? I need to add four to the stack pointer. Update stack pointer. We're going to do a write of sp as u16 
and this will be uh, SPSU 16 plus 4. That'll update the stack, and then that will allow us to ret. Uh, I think we have to ret first, and then clean up the stack. Yeah, because if it's pushing, if it's pushing in that calling convention, so in this case, it's going to push AX. That's going to push it to the software stack. Go here. And... Assertion failed. Read is equal to length. Um, no, I think this will use the soft, the hardware stack for that. We got a single, we got a W, and then we panicked on the next run round. Uh, read failed. What would it, what would it actually do? Let me see. If I implement right to do nothing actually where's a hopefully i have another three argument yeah read we have read here let's see what read does read will do a push ax ink sp6 ink sp6 I think I want to have my, I think I want this hooked in here, and then this will be like, write int, write internal. Then we don't have to worry about the calling convention. <laughs> Return write int. I want to inline that. But I can't FF the, I can't inline the bytes. Return, write int. Yeah, I need to inline assembly. Um, bytes, FF, and it doesn't let me do that. I don't think. Pseudo instruction byte not supported. Okay, what is undocumented 6502? Maybe if I just say dot data, then can I do byte? Hmm. 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 Undocumented, what do we have? FF. ISC. Let's see if it supports these. ISC and then uh, arg X. That's an absolute X. Let's see if it supports uh, undocumented instructions. Hmm. Ah. Undocumented. Add source. As I'm defined. Pass them to the assembler. Let's see what the assembler has. AS65. Uh, CA65? Yeah, 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 yeah. Smart mode. Debug. Emulation feature. I 
I don't see. I don't see how that is done. Um. Opcodes. Pseudo instructions like that are not allowed. Even if that would accept them, it's not a replacement for the mass uh, macro assembler. Hmm. 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 I just want the assembler to put two bytes in there right in the stream. Otherwise, I need to figure out this calling convention, which uh, I think I would need to pop the... So in this case, it does a push AX load there, ink SP6. That's going to load Y, add YSP. And then it does an RTS. But that, it should just be an add SP4. I mean, we can, we can try it. I feel like this is correct. I don't know. Because that does a push AX. Then it does a store F009, JSR, ink SP6. Push AX. Is it just doing that to save AX? Pull A. Pull A, push A, transfer A to, okay. Add with carry SP. Hmm. And that's failing to read because it comes back in here. So update the stack pointer by adding four. Oh, make sure that it's, yeah, that's equal to two. Then we return out. I think that's Fine. What if I had read do nothing? We're just going to temporarily have read do nothing. And we'll see what that looks like when built. Doop, 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 doop. Read. It does a push AX. Push AX. Is this the fast call? If I don't have fast call, does it do the push AX? Oops, wrong thing. This, copy, paste. This is not happy. I think I broke the clipboard. Yep. Yep. I broke the clipboard. Son of a bitch. All right, we'll just uh, reboot. There we go. I think we're good now. Okay, back in business. All 
Oh my god, did that get corrupted? Because I hard shut down? Oh my god. God fucking damn it. <laughs> ah! Oh my god. Well, that sucks. And I, I don't think I copied that off yet. No, I didn't. Oh my god. Why was that not flushed to disk? It says it's 3K. That doesn't look very 3K like. 2.35K. 3K. It's just all nulls. Nice. Nice. Well, that sucks. Oh. Uh. Is that idle? Did this, like, idle not update that file? I feel like I've seen that before. But that's all just nulls now. That's great. Um... Oh, I guess I'll have this. This won't. Yeah, I need the symbol stuff too. We'll get rid of these uh, deletes here temporarily. I can just look through in the vault. Yeah, I just don't want to type it out. But yeah, that's what that's what I'll end up doing. In this case, I think we. So this needs to go to 1,000 minus 12 minus 2. Is that right? Maybe it's 13 now. Uh, no, I got it. Okay, and then I should be able to apply these symbols. Yeah, that's great. Okay, nice. Read. So even if it does, so that's an all calling conventions that will apparently push AX and then ink SP6, that's going to load Y, add Y SP, add with carry to that, and then store A to there. You see that store a there, and then this is if it overflowed, and then it PLA pull a return. But that's still using the normal stack. I don't know how this isn't equal to me just adding four to the stack. That's just that's adding six. This push ax doesn't do anything. Load A, SEC, SBC, subtract, make room, load Y1, transfer X to A, store A. Okay, that transfers X there. And then PLA, decrement Y, and then it stores A there. Pull A, push A, and then that returns yep ink sp6 add esp x and a pull a rts and what we're doing instead is we're doing a an undefined instruction followed by a, a 60, and that should be an RTS. We're going to do a write to 80 of the new SP. It's only adding 6 because it pushes AX, but I, I, I don't... 
Is that for homing? Oh, that's probably doing a uh, homing of that. It, it probably homes the first argument, the AX argument. Yeah, it's definitely homing AX to the stack. Um, but I feel like that shouldn't matter. So we got a W, and then we had a read fault on buff. Print trying to read X buff. Trying to read five. Maybe it already, I think it was pushing. Push AX, ink SP6. That pushes, push A0, load X. I see, yeah, push A0, okay, that makes sense. Push A0, that's the length. LEA zero. Push AX. And then at the end, I think it I think it actually restores the stack pointer. I think this is getting the address of the stack. LEA zero plus two. So it's getting the stack plus two. So that's gonna load X ADC AD PHA TXA. Well then why yeah, well we have concrete evidence that this needs to ink SP6. So if this adds 6 to SP, then why, why would this be then calling again? We can try a 2. Yep. And 6 just should be wrong here. Six would be overshooting. Yeah. Like four should be correct, I think. Get SP at four. Unless it really expects that it that it does a push AX there. Ink SP4. PHA. Clear the carry flag. Transfer Y to A. Add with carry. Store to A. Or store to 80. Branch. Increment. PLA. RTS. And that's a jump. And that's a JSR. That will ret to here, which will ret again. But that's fine. Um, mm, mm. I'm just confused there. I mean, I can do the cleanup in a in assembly and just I can implement it the exact same way. So here we can do a an import of under push ax and of ink sp six, and we can do a JSR of push ax and our function, then a JSR of ink sp6. And then we don't have to clean up anything. Ink sp6, that shouldn't clobber. I guess that clobbers Y, but that's fine. Only A and X need to be saved and restored. This doesn't affect X. 
this should have this should be exactly the same. Uh, ink as p six maybe without underscores. Okay, so push ax. Ink as p six, and then RTS. It's exactly the same. And then we don't actually update anything except a and x here. Yep. Uh, hmm. Trying to read length buff. Let's see what the length is. I think this length is going to be ridiculous. I think it's corrupt. It's possible that it's just slightly larger than the 16 I allow. But I'm guessing it's just massive. Yeah. What if I get rid of... What if I don't have it jump up? So JSR push AX, ink SP6, RTS. Push AX. Uh, rebuild it. I think I did. Now we won't get the call up. Crash at FO6. So what is that affecting? There's something I'm doing in my code that I forgot about. Push AX. Trying to read. Handled all the VM exits. The read shouldn't affect anything. What is going on here? Read, 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 read. The only thing I could think of is maybe it's expecting that it returns on the stack, but I don't think so. My read routine does nothing. So I'm going to return OX1234. Just to make sure we're doing returns correctly too. Maybe we're doing the return wrong. Maybe we're doing the return wrong. I don't think so though. Uh, whoops, kernel program. Six five oh two. Load at this address. Load at this address. Load the symbols. Is this six five oh two? Yes, it is. Pwn the Gibson. Thank you for subscribing. What's up? Let's take a look at what do we have? We have read returning one two three four. LDX, LDA, that's what we do. X gets the high part, A gets the low part, and then JSR Inc. SP6. Hmm. Is it on our the thing we patched? These jump to call up funk. Oh. Uh, is that right that that does a jump? JSR push AX. Arg length. Did we change that one? 
Why is one jump and one is a JSR? I guess that one, it wants to return one function up. All right. Call out func adder. This, it's going to jump. To there which will jump and then that will ret that one will jump I think that's fine I think these changes are what is this affecting ffo3 jsr and ksp6 rts in ksp6 rts I have no idea why this is not working. I'm trying to read that. In okay, in that case, oh, maybe it is working. Um I have to add two now to this because those are now getting homed on the stack. Okay. Okay, that's still like infinitely looping. But why? It's not doing L seek. It's not doing anything. Oh, is that? No. That should just do the printf and then fault. Unless it's calling open inside of there. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. We'll put printf in main. Maybe there is recursion. Maybe it tries to open uh, standard out. I could totally see it trying to open standard out. Yeah, but why did it print one? I don't, I don't know. Test. Uh, include standard io.h. Whoop. So this is exactly what we saw before, the infinite loop. Why would that happen? JSR. Oh, are these optimized? Oh, these are optimized in this. Is this getting inlined and optimized? Is setting those registers not actually committing them architecturally? Should if I do an RTS at the end? Because RTS will be... How did... I'm surprised that changed... Oh, yeah. Uh, now I want to go, I want to look back four and back two, because now the stack has passed those things. They're still the same values. I think this is still going to loop. Yep. I think those registers are, are maybe, yeah, I think those are in the IL. Um, if I turn off that optimization pass in my IL, we'll be fine. So I need to have those update the intermediate states in the IL. Uh, optimize. So we'll get rid of the register propagation. That's the bug. I think. It's definitely the bug.
why would that loop? Read that. A and X. Yeah. Like, that would totally make sense that that was getting optimized out. see what happens. I, I think it is an optimization thing. I think writing to registers might not always commit them. Well, apparently not. Uh, reg prop. So, oh, because a trap, a trap is the end. A trap is, yeah, a trap ends a block and thus it is actually safe. I, I thought of that when I made it. Okay, so... If I, if I do this, if I get rid of my call into my code, is this correct? Oh, oh my god. I never advanced PC. I have to manually advance PC past the trap. Right? Yeah, advance PC past, yep. Okay, so all this shit was unnecessary. I mean, we can do this because it's just clean. Push AX there. Uh, this is now plus two. This is now plus four. Trying to read. Gone. Okay. Happy. Do I have another print in here? Nope. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh, PC not found in the scope. Yeah. Um, uh, in this case, PC is... Where did you get PC? From here? I didn't even know I set reg PC. I'm kind of surprised that works. I must set reg in here. Yeah, after a branch. Um, I think that's going to set the wrong PC. I think this is only correct if it's directly after a branch. So we'll manually handle the stack update. Um, I need to have that PC value get updated in the IL. Because right now I, I actually don't track PC. Um, search and fail that equal to length. Yep, of course. Now I just have to update the stack. So here we'll write um, update stack. And at this point, this is now at zero. And this is at two. Update the stack right to 80 we're gonna pass sp sp as u16 plus 2 plus 4 advance the stack advance pc because now we'll enter here right after a call or a jsr or jump do i only update PC. Let me see what PC is. I think my PC is just bad. I Maybe I update PC somewhere else. Set regs. No, I don't. I don't set it up on a trap. So that definitely could just be incorrect. Um, I could have each instruction just write their PC. I need to have like a translation from the JIT back to the PC. Um, that's something that... I've been meaning to do, but it's it's gonna be really tough. Uh, let's double check before we make that assumption. How would the other hooks have worked? T1023. Uh, okay. That actually looks correct. Let's make sure we're on the right kernel program, otherwise, we're going to look like a fool. How would it have the right PC value there? I, I have no idea how that PC is correct in that state. Rx1023. Yeah, that's right. Is it always right? 1023. Okay. 
Um, update X and A. Update PC to the next instruction. Who's setting PC? Uh, branch with the target in there. Yep. Timeout. Yep. Where's trap at? Trap. I don't even know how that's correct. On a branch. That would work the first time. Log the most recently executed PC. That's only on those. Branch indirect. Do I return it out on a trap? I have no idea how it's getting that PC value correct. Where is it possibly getting that? Reg write PC. Oh, I write out PC every instruction. Okay, so PC is correct. Okay, so that makes sense now. Um... Okay, so why is this not working then? I thought we had fixed everything. Um, we get a T, then we have a crash at foo six, and then we get a bunch of T's. I think that's just more fuzz cases going through. Yeah, they're all crashing after T. So T, uh, we got a, an open. Why is it only printing one? I feel like there's a four somewhere. I feel like this is not supposed to be one. Um, I feel like it's supposed to be writing more than, than one. Len. Print write at... X of this buff len. Okay, right at that of one. We're just going to see a lot of these now, but they're all... The question is, are they actually hitting a legitimate open? First of all, let me see if any of these opens use the third argument. I hate I hate how open takes a variable argument. It makes no sense to me. I don't think anyone's going to use it. Um I'm going to redefine open to only take two args. Although internally it might, internally it might call that in the library stuff, and then that would crash in a really weird way. Because um, handling that variable argument Okay, open, return negative one from open. I, I feel like it would not be hitting an open and test. Uh, I can actually, yeah, we'll do this. We'll go back to what we had. We'll go back to open, doing that. And then down here, after our printf, we'll say uh, 99. And if we see a crash due to a a 99 access, then, okay. Are we seeing a crash? 
Crash, accessing FO99. So, yeah, uh, for some reason we have the length wrong. Is it at... SP plus 2... Advanced PC, pass the trap, update the stack. Um, why are we only seeing one character? Right at that of one. Let's find something that calls right. Let's double check it. Okay, that calls it AX. This is F put C. Oh, is this the length? Oh, AX is the length. I guess the arguments are stored the other way. S strange, Str strange, very strange. Okay. We want uh, just kind of stealing this. Actually, this is what we want. There we go. That's better. So this will have. So yeah, the buffer's in the middle there. But I guess um, this is the len. Apparently. I guess the argument, they're stored where the the last argument is stored in the registers. I mean, there's a, yeah, that's, that's. Don't know why, but, uh, okay. So how is open implemented? So we have that now. Uh, did I get rid of the print? No, I didn't. Right at that. Okay. This. Okay. FO6 print what happened here oh I got rid of my printf okay so now we handle writes so the one was F the file descriptor which makes sense because FD1 is standard out so thanks for following on the hunt How's it going? Okay, so we need to implement open. I think we're kind of back <laughs> after that tangent. Um, so open takes the variable argument. So how would they actually go about implementing that? Um, how do you know if you have the extra argument? Pwn the Gibson, thanks for following. <laughs> All right, let's see. How how do you implement open with that variable argument? How do you know the length of the variable args? Like, how do you know if that extra argument is passed in? Um, I'm going to look at just an implementation of it. Uh, libsource, apple2, let's take a look at open. Throw away all parameters except name and flags occupying together four bytes. Decrement, 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 JUI. Okay. Flags, dot, dot, dot. So when open gets hit, DEY, 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 DEY. Add YSP. What is Y? What is what is Y? What is that? 
what passes in with Y? All right, let's look at someone who calls open. Um, oh, does this handle variable arguments? Can I just return out of that? Can I safely return out of this? If I have variable arguments, or is that going to screw up my stack? I guess, yeah, I guess you can do that. And and the compiler has to figure that out for you. I thought with VARs you had to handle them. Uh, foo. Okay. Then we get a warning. Okay, nice. So for warns now, we can do... We can have warns go to print f um how do we remap these so we want warn and warn x to go directly to print f because i have no way of, of handling this format um actually i can do uh because I thought variable args, I thought you had to know how many things you wanted. N. Yeah, that's the number of things. VA start. VA start, you give it the name of the last thing. Should not be declared with register. Okay, name of the last named parameter. Oh. Oh, that's the last name parameter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I completely forgot. Yeah, it's not actually it's not actually taking a number. I man, why was wow. Wow. Yeah, it's not a number at all. This is just format. Yup. And then I can do VA end. I, for some reason, I thought you had to know the number, and I'm like, that makes no sense in this case. Wow. I, I've i really, really forgotten how C works. Um, okay, standard IO. We can do, uh, we should be able to do a VS printf. Uh, actually, vprintf. Yeah, just vprintf, and that will take the uh, arg, the format, and then the arg value initialized with va start. So just vl. Same with this. Man, I like have forgotten so much. <laughs> okay, then in this, this is the same thing. And this is the same thing as well. And here I can do like print f error percent d colon this eval. Do that after the VA start. We'll do this. This will be error. So error x. And then I think these have to exit. So we'll do times. Uh, those ones are defined that they actually exit the application. So we're going to have those. Uh, we'll have error go to 30. And error x will go to 31. Okay, so error x percent d eval. Error percent d eval format. And then this will do uh, printf warn x. printf warn uh, include standard io.h printf warn x error percent d percent d uh, v printf Okay, 
So this will probably say like failed to open file. I'll be really happy if it does. Uh, warn colon test.c. Nice. Warn test.c. And I guess these probably are supposed to put a new line. So put c, put a new line at the end after all of these as well. Make sure they get flushed as well. Doop, 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 doop. Macro argument. Uh, F put C. Right? Put C. Oh, you have to give it the stream. Even in put C. Oh, it's put char that you don't have to. Been a long time. Nice. Okay. So those will put a nice new line there as well. Clean that up a little bit. Okay. Warn test.c. Nice. So if we take a look at... Uh, that took a... <laughs> took a a lot more time than it should have. Uh, we're going to look at um, C tags OpenBSD, C tags.c. We're going to look at main. And here we are. Now we're on top of it. Okay. So in here, we'll see a warn on the argument if it failed to open it. So f open failed. Uh, okay. Sweet. So we just have to, obviously, we're implementing that incorrectly. So warn correctly, we'll get that format. And warn format vl put char v v a end warn x uh error percent d and error x percent d with the eval and then those will actually exit out and warning will not pledge does nothing and strill copy um we're gonna have to implement once that's hit so open is the one that we have to implement right now so we're going to make a structure of file descriptors. Um, what made you choose binary exploitation over web app exploitation? It just interests me more. Um, that's, that's really it. I like low level stuff. I've liked working with assembly. Um, so that's kind of why I ended up there. Have you ever messed around with WASM and Rust uh, at all for fun? I have, I have done WebAssembly once. Um, and it was like 20 lines of code to like see if it worked. Um, but I was going to make like a graphing library in it, but I don't know. I, I pretty much only do backend things. I don't really do anything visual. Um, so, okay. So for open, we're going to get a file name. I think we're going to have opens go up as well. So opens, we're probably going to have... I'm probably going to give the file name up and because when an open occurs, I think I'm just going to want to like give it the file contents. So I might make like an internal open that you pass in the name and then it gives you the contents of that file. Um... And then that will allow us to inject a file into this environment from outside. Um, we don't need push X and those. Okay. So to do that, what I would do would be a invocation of like open internal and we'll pass in name and flags. I don't really care too much about the flags. Um, so this is POSIX open. So let's go check out the. Let's go check out the args that we'd get past. So I think we're only ever gonna get. Probably only ever gonna get so f open. Uh, jump f open here, and then that's going to. When it goes to call open 
here. Uh, LDY, that's going to be the last argument. Um, no, that's definitely not right. Uh, store A, that I think... I think y is like the variable argument stuff. I don't really know what calling convention they defined because it's just a custom one for their compiler. Um, so open. Yep. And open. I'm trying to figure out where the... Uh, here's the plus. Oh, so that loops. Um, if it's equal to b... Then it goes around. Otherwise, it's error invalid. Comes up to here. I and Y. It's just going through and it's like reading all of those fields. Like the append one. This is going to ORA. Transfer X to A or A tax. So A. This is accumulating an A. Or this is accumulating an X. So it's probably going to zero out x. Load x is 52. 52 hex. Um, is that the default mode? And then down here, it's going to or in 3. If it's equal to a plus, then this will put it into append mode. If it's b, it ignores b, it seems. So... Load x1. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So x is definitely the field that holds the um, the flags. And this is the only location open actually can get called. So we just have to worry about the different values that we see in x. So we know that um, the bits that we know that this implementation uses, uses 3 uh, here when it's in append mode. It uses uh, 52, or if it's in uh, read and write mode, it has 3. So that sets read and write. Um, in append mode, it has 52, so or in 52. And that is with just a 1. That's in read mode. And in write mode, that's o create and um, o o create and o truncate and write so or 32 so these are all of the bits that we need to handle um so let's go check out those bits in i think openbsd will be the best place here so vim user include tags and we'll look at o trunk okay i guess they use their own different flags. So read and write, yep, those are the bottom two bits. And then we have three more bits up here. We're going to actually look at the ones specifically for CC65, include, and we'll find, oh, I did not want to open that in code. Um, o trunk. Okay. Uh, uh, function control or file control. Here we have O trunk. Okay, here are all the flags. So we have read only, write only, read write, which is read only and write only ord together. We have create, truncate, append, and uh, excl. I always forget what that does. Um, error if it exists. Okay, exclusive. Um, so we only have to worry about 7.3. So we will figure out these bits. Um... So we have to implement this. And I think if it's truncating, then we don't care. If it's truncating, then we don't care about the file. So we're going to say if flags and o trunk um, file is going to be created and truncated anyways. So... Our file is going to be truncated anyways, so we don't have to break into the um, into the harness. So in this case, if it's o trunk, then in this case we're going to create like a new file descriptor. So we'll do like struct um, 
loose struct uh, file des. This will be a um, name. File name. Do I do I care about the file name? <sighs> kind of. And then we're gonna have descriptors, and we'll have we'll allow up to four. And this will have valid if it's okay. So now we have to implement open effectively. Uh, read only, write only. I don't care too much of the of. Uh, let's do read, write, set when the file is readable. Set when the f the file is writable. Uh, we'll have size t offsets, current offset into the file. Uh, and that's going to be an off t. So current offset into the file. Because these all use off t's, yeah. Okay, so current offset into the file um, set when the this descriptor is in use, and we'll call it in use. So they'll start off not in use. Then we're going to um, int ii for ii equals zero, ii is less than four, ii plus plus. Uh, we're gonna always find a descriptor. So find a free file descriptor. And we'll set this to like 16. We'll allow 16 open files at a given time. Um, find a free file descriptor up to 16, uh, and we'll do define max file open uh, is equal to 16. Boom. There, ii++. If descript, descript or copy, paste. If this is not in use, if it's not in use, then this is going to be our free file descriptor. Found a free file descriptor. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, then we'll do descript. <laughs> I cannot type this word. Dot in use equals one. Descriptors ii dot read is equal to um, flags and uh, o read only. Write is going to be equal to o write only. Descript. <laughs> then if it's not creating a file. Um, then we'll set the offset is equal to zero. So we're initializing all the fields. And then we'll do descriptors ii dot name is equal to stir dupe of name. That's what stir dupe does, right? It just makes a copy of it. Then I'm going to uh, if if if, 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 if the sturdy failed, then do I need the name in that structure? I don't think I do. I don't. Okay, so in use is one, read, write, offset, and then we'll uh, return uh, ii plus three. Return the file descript. <laughs> Return the file descriptor plus uh, the three open files in standard out, standard error. So we want to skip over the three open files. That means the first descriptor that we'll give out will be three, uh, which will correspond to index zero. 
Okay, so that will find an open file. It will track the read and write flags. And then uh, what we want to do is if flags and o trunk, if the truncate flag is not set, um, if the truncate flag, well, if the create, if the create flag is not set, then get the original file contents from, uh, get the original file contents from the harness. So in this case, this would be when it wants to read a file that already exists. We're going to write to this temporarily, and we'll fix that up. So uh, get the original file content from the harness. If it's not being created, then it is being um, append mode is possible. If it's append mode, then Okay, so the offset is set to zero by default. If it's truncate, that's correct. Um, I guess I can have a length here, current length of the file. And we'll do a uh, size T len. We'll do length and length. So the length starts at a zero. Then we're gonna say if not flags and o trunk. Then we'll do um, we'll set the length to zero. Uh, if the truncate flag was set, or I don't know what I'm doing if not. So if the if the create flag is set, then we're gonna get the original contents. We're gonna log the read and write flags. If the truncate flag was set, then we'll set the length to zero, and then we'll also set the offset to zero. Uh, actually, no. Then down here, if the append flag was set, so if flags and o append, then we're going to set the offset equal to the length. So, and then that means if truncate happens first, then the length will get set to zero. So if uh, if we're not creating the file, if we're not creating the file, get the original contents. Then if we're truncating the file, set the length to zero. If we're appending to the file, then set the offset to be equal to the length. Uh, read only, write only, or do you create trunk append? I think that is all the logic, correct. So we just need to be able to get things from remotely. Um, but other than that, I think this is fine. So um, define um, fixed uh, FD base three uh, base to apply to all dynamic FDs to accommodate for standard in, standard out, standard error just so we don't have a hard-coded constant. So we'll get the FD base plus II. Okay, if it's not in use, then we set it to in use. We save the read and write flags. We set the offset link to zero. If we're not creating the file, then we're going to get the original contents. Otherwise, if we're truncating, uh, and then in all cases, if we're truncating it, set the length to zero. If we're appending, then set the offset to be equal to the length. That basically just seeks to the end. And then we return the base descriptor uh, failed to open. So then in this case, we failed to open the file. So we return negative one. Okay, and we just need to pull in include um, file control. Okay, 27. Uh, struct file des descriptors. What is not valid about this? I mean, is it? Okay. 
there's... It'll get initialized to zero anyways, but, uh... Why, why doesn't it like that? Oh, do I need to put another one in here? Yeah. Okay, so that will initialize that to zero. That looks good. I do need this struct keyword in this case. If you don't have a struct keyword, it's, it's not gonna be happy. You need struct, struct is uh, required unless I did a type def and then made this file des. But struct should be required there. Um, yeah, rasterization is pretty much the only use for WASM so far. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet for that. Um, hey, bad vibes, how's it going? Uh, okay, descriptors, so they start off as zero. If one's not in use, set it to in use, set read write, offset length. Um, descriptors. I think that's good. So we're gonna probably see a, a 40, an FO40 deref. Yep, there we go. And that's happening because we need to get the original file. So I'm gonna say, um, I want to give this, how do I wanna do this? So I have to break into it. So we have to implement like uh, internal open. That'll be a four. And then we'll do a, a void int open void. So that would cause that to get invoked which would then cause the FFO4. I wanna pass in one argument here. I wanna pass in a descriptor. So to do that, I'll do, I'll pass in descriptors II as a reference. And then that will fill in that descriptor or kill the fuzz case. Uh, function must be external. Yeah. Okay, so external void that. Then we call int open. We pass in a reference to the descriptor thing. I actually don't know what the size of an offset is. I'm just going to say, is an off t? There's a chance that they use uh, uh, 32 bits for that instead of a, a standard 16-bit, um, but we're gonna just say it's a size T. Uh, actually, yeah, a size T will, will make sure that it is a size that we know. So all of these will be two-byte fields in this structure. So we pass that to internal open, good. And this will cause a trap, and then we can get a pointer to this descriptor, and then we'll fill it in from the outside. Um, I'm going to need to get access to the file name as well. Um, I'm going to put the file name in here temporarily. Uh, file name only used during the open process, not a valid pointer. So this will be name. We'll pass in the name here. Name is equal to name. That means it just gets passed up to... Um, uh, const. And then once we, we're done with that, actually, we only want to fill in the name for this. And then once we're done with it, we'll set the name to null. So we just want it valid for that call. Um, that means we only have to worry about one argument. Why do, you F, why do you do FFO4? That is a special trap instruction that I implemented that allows me to trap up and I get this. So the four that you're seeing here is due to the uh, O4. And it allows me to kind of mux and, and handle these as different events. So now I'm gonna write a handler for uh, opens. So when we get an O4, I'm going to handles, uh, handles and open. And then in this case, uh, I'm going to get the pointer and we'll read that. So we're going to read that into a structure that has the descriptor shape. And I think this is everything we need for a descriptor. So handles and open. Um, I'm going to need a buffer in here too. 
So we'll add that. So this will be um, unsigned char buff actual contents of the entire file. Okay. So then over here, uh, let's make sure that builds. Um, so this is going to start off as null. Um, so buff will start off as null, and then name will also start off as null. Okay, so if we truncated or appended, then blah, blah, blah. Um, if So that's always null, and then if it's null when a write occurs, then we can allocate it and, and make room for that buffer. Um, Perfect. So in this case, I'm going to do get x, get y, OK? And then we need to write a Rust implementation of this. So we'll do repr c packed struct file des in use uh, i16 read i16 write i16 offset uh, u16 length u16 buff u16 name u16. Okay, and I should be able to do a um, read into that. So we'll do a derive default and we'll just read into that. So let file des equals mutable file des is equal to uh, file des default. We're going to read into there. I'm going to make sure that that's equal to standard mem size of val file des. Might not like that reference again there. Uh, read from pointer. Okay, and then at the end here, we're going to panic and we'll pretty print out the file descriptor. Okay, can't be formatted. Yep, debug. Uh, byte safe. Uh, do I drive byte safe or safe cast? I might not have that scoped. I don't. Okay, so SP cargo toml byte safe uh, safe cast is equal to path equals dot dot slash safe cast byte safe derive, I think is what I call it. Oh my god. I should switch these over to my new library. This old one has dependencies, but I've I made a new one that doesn't. Oh, I hate debs. Yeah. Okay, so Byte safe, yep, and then I just, how do I do this in MMU? Byte, byte safe, safe cast. Oh, I make that pub. I guess I don't use anything here. Do I have anything that is using that right now? This one would probably do it. Safe. Okay. Um, use safe cast, safe cast. I don't think it's that one. I think I need to uh, macro use extern create byte safe derive. Yep. 
drive on structures without copy. Luckily, we can implement copy. Unreachable, yep, okay, nice. So now we'll see the shape of that structure. We should have a pointer to a uh, file name. Yep, that looks like a pointer. In use, read, write, okay, offset, all these things. Looks great. So we'll get the name. Um, and man, I hate null terminated strings. So, <sighs> null terminated strings are such a pain in the ass. Absolute pain in the ass. Why do they exist? Let mute buff is equal to vec new for uh, while. And we'll just loop, I guess, and then uh, we'll read a byte. Uh, let mute uh, name pointer is equal to file desk dot name read from name pointer into uh, buff dot push zero. We'll read into buff buff dot len b len is equal to buff dot len. Uh, we can just do this. Let mute temp is equal to ou eight mute temp. If it's assert that it's equal to one, uh, if temp is equal to zero, break. Otherwise, name point uh, name dot push temp name, and then we can do string from utf eight name dot unwrap. Let file name is equal to this print file name is this file name uh, as you size got to advance the name pointer whoops plus equals one okay File name is test.c. Perfect. 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 If file name is equal to test.c, uh, else panic unexpected file name. Uh, in this case, file name. Okay. If it's test.c, then inject the fuzz case here. So this is where the fuzz case needs to go. So um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna temporarily do like input is equal to uh, int main return zero as bytes, and then we'll do uh, file des dot File length is equal to input dot len file des dot file des dot buff is equal to did we allocate a location for the input file? I don't think so. So we had like our allocator at C zero D0. Let's put our input at E0. I'm gonna make uh I'm gonna make an allocation at E0. Add memory. Create memory for the input file. Put this at input file adder input file len. constant input file address u size is equal to ox e file len is equal to this okay so 307 
input len as u size or dot yeah as u16. Then the buffer is going to be the input file address, and then we're going to do um, vm dot mmu dot set permissions caused vm exit vert adder this for this. We'll set the permissions to zero. Assert that this is equal to the length. So we'll set the permissions, uh, disable all access to the input file. Okay, and then I want to set it to read only. Enable read only access to the length. This is input.len. So we only give access to that. And then I do vm. Uh, oops, not read only. Um, prot read. Dot write caused vm exit vert adder the input file address. Then we're going to write to the uh, we'll write the input. We'll assert that that is equal. Whoa, that's prot read there, and that is equal to input.len. This is equal to input.len. Uh, dot, dot. As u16. Okay, perm read. right in the input file. Okay, that filled to right, uh, right force. That will skip the permission checks. Okay, uh, now the length is 24. The buff is at this address, which that should be E0. And it is, um, okay. Then down here, this is given access to a context. So we'll do vm.contextMute.opened false. And our context structure opened bool tracks if we have already opened foop.c. Um, I guess it, it doesn't matter. We can open the we can open the same file multiple times because we're gonna load it to the same address and we're we're giving it out read only, so it actually does not matter. Um, technically, this return needs to happen like here. Otherwise, we're not uh, resetting our allocator. Okay. Um, I think we can just get rid of the panic here. We have to update the, we have to advance PC past the trap and return that we handled all VMs. That's it. We're a, we're a void function, so we don't have to do anything here. I'm scared. I'm scared. FO8. Nice, that's probably a seek. Yep. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let's take a look at our file. Let's uh, printf file contents r percent s, and we'll print uh, buff. Uh, let's build it. Okay, and let's throw a null in there. This will probably crash. This this will likely crash due to an out of bounds read at at e on the e address. Uh, temp less than len um, two fifty. Oh, this is the 
amount of bytes to print. I'll just set this to like 256. We're, we're running on the host, so we don't actually have to worry about stack sizes. I'm so used to like working in this constrained environment now that I'm like starting to make decisions based on it. Um, okay, uh, cannot read. Uh, accessing zero file contents are that. Really? File contents are, huh. Descriptors buff. Oh, we didn't write it back in. Ha ha ha. Okay, all we need to do is we need to take this where we read the file descriptor, commit the file descriptor. We're gonna write force and we're just writing that out. Okay, hopefully this has our input. Uh, yep, so that's crashing at accessing E18. That's because we don't have a null terminator. Not that it matters in the file context because the file's not actually null terminated, but when we're printing it as a string, we need to null terminate it. So I'm glad that that crashed like that. Everything's working as expected. Um, file contents are int main. Yes! It's getting that file in there. Fuck yeah. Okay, so. Fuck yeah. All right, you get rid of the printf. Now we're hitting an lseek. That's easy. That's easy. Lseek, I can do all day long. Um. Okay. If it's seek set, go to offset bytes. So L seek. So we're gonna do um, if the FD is greater than or equal to max files open plus the fixed FD base, then the file descriptor is out of bounds. So we'll keep our eight there. So if the file descriptor is greater than or equal to that, then it's an invalid FD. Um, or if the FD is less than zero, then it's an invalid file descriptor. In which case we can just return uh, negative one. Uh, return values, um, otherwise the value of negative one and error no is set. So. If the file descriptor is greater than or equal to the base plus the maximum files open, then it's bad. Otherwise, if it's less than zero, it's also bad. Return negative one. Okay. Um, if the FD is less than uh, fixed FD base, then we're going to return. Uh, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna panic out. This is uh, seeks of standard XXX files. Not sure what to do here. Obviously, we can just have that like do nothing, but I just want to panic because I don't think that's ever going to happen. So I'd rather f fail close than fail open. Um, so if we implement here, uh, if once is seek set, the offset is set to offset bytes. Yep, so. Um, returns the resulting offset location. It allows the file offset to be set beyond the end of file. Uh, if data is written at this point, subsequent reads of the data in the gap return zeros until data is actually written into the gap. Yep. And I don't think we can go earlier in the file. If we seek before the start of the file, I think that's a I think that's an error. Um, would be negative on a file system. Uh, or a special device that doesn't allow it negative. Yep. Um, okay, so at this point, int, we have a, we're going to get a new FD. Int FD is equal to FD minus the fixed FD base. Now we can look up our descriptor. We can say if 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 it's not in use at FD, 
then return negative one. E bad f bad file descriptor. Okay. So we bounds check. Then we check if it's in use. If it's okay, now at this point we can just update the offset. So we can do um we can just get the if uh, if whence is equal to seek set, then we're going to do uh, descriptors offset is equal to offset. Um, if the offset is less than zero, return negative one. Okay, so if it's less than zero, otherwise just set that offset. And off t, I don't know if off t is two bytes. We're gonna also convert the offset here uh, to a. Uh... I don't know if, I don't know if an off t is two bytes, so I'm a little concerned about that. I mean, this is it doesn't matter that much. Seek cur else if whence is equal to seek end. So if it's seek end, it's set to the size of the file plus offset bytes. Okay. Then the offset is equal to the length plus offset. And then in this situation, the offset plus equals the offset. I will size t it. Offset. Size t offset is equal to that. So we're going to shadow it. Um, otherwise, return negative 1, invalid whence, return the offset. So if it's set, set the offset. If it's current, it's set to the current location plus offset. So plus equals offset. Um, if size t is not equal to offset t, then we're going to have issues. So I'm going to add a check for that. Or size of off t is not equal to size of uh, size t. Okay. Okay. So seek current, so then we cast that. Then this will do a wrapping arithmetic, and that is technically defined behavior. Then we're going to do the offset there. Um, yeah, it's fine. We'll just let it wrap. We'll let it wrap. I don't think it's going to use those other ones anyways, uh, and then return the offset. I don't think it's going to seek negative one. Uh, technically, maybe I should make this an S size T. Ah, fine. We'll do it correctly. So set the offset. This is fine here. If these are the same size, then this is fine. Um. I guess technically that's not fine. Uh, if the offset is less than zero, return negative one. Then in this case, if the offset is less than zero, then we're gonna have the negative case, in which case we'll take, uh, if the offset is less than negative If the offset is less than zero, if the offset, okay, we'll do uh, size t offset is equal to negative offset. Now it's greater than zero. Then I will check if the offset is greater than that, 
return negative one. Otherwise, this minus equals offset. So if the offset is greater than the current offset, then we return negative one. Otherwise, uh, if it's equal to it, it's fine. That would just result in this becoming zero. Okay. Technically, this has some weird behaviors on uh, on one um, on one encoding of that value. Oh. I could say uh, size t old is equal to this, size t new is equal to this, plus off, uh, size t offset. Then if, if the offset is greater than zero, if the offset is greater than or equal to zero, if the new offset is less than the old one, return negative one, otherwise commit it. Uh, is equal to new. So if the offset is greater than or equal to zero, make sure that the new one, if the new one is less than the old one, so somehow it went backwards, that was a failure. Otherwise, if the offset is less than zero, if the old, if the new one is greater than the old one, then that was a failure. Then we do offset apply the new one. Okay, and what happens if in the if we seek too far back? So if we seek forward and it wraps, that's an issue. If we seek too far backwards and it wraps, so if we had offset, if the current offset was five, and we added fffff to it or or like negative twenty to it, it would then become negative. In which case, new would be, in which case new would become greater than old. Yep, so if the new is greater than the old value, okay. Woo, okay, and then in seek end case, uh, here we want to do if this is less than the length, then there's an integer overflow. So if the length plus the offset is less than the length, so it wrapped, then it return negative one. Otherwise, we just put the length and the offset there. Else return negative one and then return the offset. Okay. Man, Foxy. Shit's too hard. Way too hard to write in this language. Control reaches end of non-void function. Um, well, there's no way to get here, but uh, thanks, compiler. Brilliant. 80. That's fine. 94, too many local variables. <sighs> Missing else. Not here. This is just a, uh, this scope always happens. I, I think I was actually looking at the wrong line there. Um, 
Yeah, I was talking about this one. Okay, uh, 88. Result is constant. Oh, shit. So, they're not equal. Off T is, uh, okay, so... If offset is greater than um, int max or offset is less than int min. Problem solved. What are those? Those are uh, like um, synergdef.h. Int max limits. Okay. So if the offset is greater than int max or it's less than int min, then bye. Technically, I, I think there's a size t max. Size t is there. Uh, int max. Well, it's fine. We know ints are the same size as size t's. Too many local variables. Uh, semicolon is expected at 105. Here. 99. Too many local variables. Can I just put it up here? Multiple definition for fd. Does it not allow me to do scoping like this? That's kind of annoying. Uh, FD off, FD, FD off is equal to this, FD off, it has to allow scoping like that, it'd be insane if it didn't, FD, Okay. Apparently, um, can we get an, uh, an emote? I really need to get emotes set up. I actually don't really know how to do that. I can just reassign FD. Yeah, I just don't like. I just don't like doing that. I don't know. Like, I I don't. I really like shadowing. Um, I don't know. Nevertheless, uh, I think this is good. So if the FD is greater than or equal to this, or the FD is less than zero, return negative one. If it's less than the FD base, then that's like a weird exception. Make sure the offset is in reasonable boundaries. Um, if it's not return negative one, get the FD off. If, it's n if this file descriptor is not in use, fail. Uh, seek to the start. Um, if the offset is less than zero, then we fail. Otherwise, we just set it as size t offset. That's good. Uh, in this case, we get the old offset. We get the new offset. We perform the wrapping arithmetic. If we should have gone forwards, uh, if new has gone less than the old one, return negative one, update the offset. If Otherwise, if the new has become greater than old, then return negative one, uh, set the offset, then in this case, if the length has had a, uh, if the length plus the offset is less than the length, then return negative one. Otherwise, offset is length plus offset. In all other cases of seeks, return negative one, return the new offset. I think that's right. I think we nailed it. <laughs> yes, Rust is cool, but this is not Rust. <laughs> Accurate. F O one A. A read. Hey, I can do reads. Uh, basically, we're gonna take the same logic here. And 
Um, okay, here. And FD off. If it's not in use, bad F. Okay. If count plus offsets. If this is less than the offset, return negative one. Okay. Size, uh, yep, I can't make a new variable there. Um, we're gonna do size t end, I guess. Yeah. So if that is less than that, okay, then we'll do end is equal to this. Technically, we can just set this here and we can do end. If the end is less than the offset, then that's an issue. If the end is greater than, uh, actually, let's see if we have min. Let's see if that is in there. I don't think so. So uh, we'll do um, if the end is greater than the length of the file, then we want to have the length. Otherwise, we want the end. Size t bread is equal, well, technically it's not bread. So, uh, this will be end, we'll reassign it. End equals min between this and end. So if the end is greater than the length of the file, then use the length of the file. Otherwise, use end. And end is the offset plus the count that we want to read. If that has uh, integer overflow, return failure. Then in this case, then we're gonna see, so now that's inbound to the file. And now we get bread. So bread is equal to the um, end minus the offset. Compute number of bytes to read. And we'll do a mem copy into buff from descriptors.buff plus offset. Bread. Return bread. I think there, there, there are technically some bugs in here. Include string.h. So there are some bugs in here. Um, since this returns an int, it could be an issue if the count is greater than uh, int max. So uh, if, if bread is greater than int max, return negative one. I guess I could calf it there. We'll just do this. Compute the number of bytes to read, end minus the, the offset, copy bread, and then we'll update the offset. Offset plus equals bread, return bread as an int. All right, that's like ballpark, roughly maybe correct, kind of, potentially, maybe. <laughs> FD off in use if that is greater than that uh, accessing 7F9B oh god we underflowed uh did we That's on the stack. It's reading uninitialized data on the stack. Because the stack is at 8,000, right? I think it is. I think it is. 
Yep, that's the stack. Uh, oh. Do I do that? Do I read something on initialize off the stack? Is that on me? Let's take a look. It's probably my fault. It's fucking impossible to write C. Shit's too hard, dude. Shit is way too hard. Um, 6502 test, uh, dev. Uh, what is this? Uh, um, soft serve, 6502 test. Grab the test app. We just want the labels in the program. Let's take a look. Do you think it's me? Do you think I'm the one screwing it up? Am I the one causing crashes? Breaking everything? Okay, some parse. Oh, it's going to be me. Well, I have no idea who's causing that one. But it's definitely on the stack. Um... FD off, that gets initialized. End. That gets initialized. Bread. Oh. Look at that. Uninitialized. Look at that. Woo! <laughs> How fucking cool is that? How cool is that? Unreal. Oh. Fucking love this code, dude. So good. This harness. Oh, it might be it might be doing it. Crash accessing sixty seven eleven. X flag. X flag. Reading the X flag. That is nice. It's actually like doing some parson stuff. Let's check out where it's at. This is gonna be, uh, yeah, we're in, we're in get line. Nice. Oh, we're in one of these functions. That's pretty sweet. That's so, oh. Did we get this first try? Is this right? Shit. Shit, yeah. All right, X flag. Let's, uh, let's initialize that. So in C tags, apparently they don't, uh, c tags, c tags dot c, x flags. So, we'll just set, uh, we'll just set x flag equals zero. Cause that to get initialized. It's technically fine because it's in BSS, but I have this in a very strict mode right now where even BSS on initialized accesses are, are, uh, trigger a crash. So, X flag is equal to zero. That looks good. Okay, accessing F007. That's, oh my God, is that close? Is that close? Is that close? Where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? <gasps> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. You know, I should make an accessor function to get the FD. Uh, if it's not in use, uh, then we're just gonna go uh, whoop, equals zero. Done. What do you mean offset? Yeah. Get the FD off. Uh, return zero. Did I really not yell at me for that? Okay. So now that's going to blah, blah, blah. F close, E bad F, in use is equal to zero. Is it gonna parse? This is gonna try and open, oh. What's this? I might need to uh, get the new 
yeah. We need new symbols. Okay, this, 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 this. Roop. Okay. Head. Yep, that is the... Okay, so we'll just set that as well. It's just nice that it like kind of tells me what's being used. So that's kind of why I do this where it's really strict. We're probably gonna get an open uh, filter instruction. Okay. Why? Oh, is that done? It might be done. Fifty three oh four. Is that like, um, reading instruction? Okay. Uh, print get instruction at X. Per PC. Per PC dot zero. I wonder what's going on here. I think, is that reading? Is that doing a ret up to... Where's that doing a ret to? I, I'm curious if this is my uh, main. 6792. Okay, let's see if there's a... How did it get back into here? Um, I think it might have completed. Int, re int result is equal to this. Printf c tags exited with percent %d result. And then let's just kill it. Let's just kill it. Let's kill it. Um, I just need one of those good old DRFs. Well, we'll set this to like 111. Uh, control reaches the end of non-void function. Technically, it doesn't, but we'll make it happy. Okay, so we'll see if this still has that issue. I'm guessing that it was returning out, and um, I don't have a way to return from main, so I'm going to make it crash. Um, huh. So for some reason it is getting there. Let's, uh, fail to read instruction. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, and it's trying to get this instruction. Yep. How is it getting to here? Why is it jumping to 1000? Oh, was that done lib? Nope, that's init lib. 
Oh. Does Dunlib jump to the same spot? It does. Uh, but this is the one in a nitlib. Is something calling a nitlib? I don't think there's anything that can. And main should crash. I have no idea. Let's uh, let's grab coverage. See what's going on. Let's see if that helps us out here. Color. Okay. We go into C tags. Boolean E. Go down here. Init, set this stuff up. Everything looks good. Find entries. And we get load AXYSP. Um, So for some reason, that's like returning to a bad location. Then that calls exit. F close FP. I think it's it's making it to the end of that function. I don't know why the stack is fucked. Pledge. Do I corrupt anything? So my asthma helpers, those are straightforward. Um I guess technically I have a write to null or a, a read from null. Well, we don't see a, uh, okay, so the writes, yeah, the writes we don't see go anywhere. The writes shouldn't cause any corruption. The reads, this would crash with the null deref potentially. Um, actually, length would be zero. So we would never perform that. Um, yeah, mem copy, it would copy zero bytes. So that's technically fine. We don't handle writing to a file and then reading from that file. That's an edge case. We don't check the flags. Once again, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, is, it this, is it this? Do we need to consume the variable arguments on open? Because it seems like our stack has become unaligned or misaligned. And like... The only thing that would make sense would be either corruption of the stack, which I don't think is happening, uh, of bread, and bread is end minus offset, and end is offset plus count. That is less than the offset, return negative one. Otherwise, okay, so that looks good. Mem copy there into buff. That looks fine. Our file descriptors are all bounds checked.
The only thing I could think of would be those dots. These, we consume them all. But, I mean, that... That should be handled. Whatever, we'll start, we'll start the... Yeah, that's... Like, we're right at the end, too. Oh! What is happening? Load AXYSP. Load A, tax, decrement, load A, yep. DEY RTS. And how would that fail? The only way that would happen is if the stack pointed to the, the real stack. Which would only happen if SP got corrupted. Maybe we're getting into exit. Because this would hit a nit lib. I'm going to hook exit. I bet we're hitting exit. Five. I bet we're hitting exit and maybe we're just slightly... <sighs> Duplicate. That's the point. Under, under exit. Let's see if that gets us a hook there. It's possible that we're hitting this exit here. Um, and for some reason, the maybe my coverage file wasn't the right version. But I, I don't, I feel like I synced that coverage. Yeah, unable to read instruction. Somehow we're getting back to, okay, let's see, this guy. Uh, we need the different program. It might be exit getting called. Uh-oh, clipboard's broken again. see what is going on yep Okay, get the symbols in here. Okay, so we were executing. When did we start executing at? Okay, so this. This, that is exit. Oh, our exit, we didn't hook it. That, that didn't do the trick. Okay, so we'll just get, yeah, I guess uh, the, other, the other things we've been able to like kind of override by doing this, but for some reason, for that one, we can't. Um, so exit. We're just going to have, we just need to make sure that C tags never calls exit. 
or we need to smash over the exit implementation because that's causing yeah that's jumping to here which we'll call done lib that's a label yeah in this case that's going to jsr to here that'll call done lib Um, just our exit. How do I hook those? I could, I could build with a different CRT. We're already using a custom CRT, so I could go and hack that up. Uh... Uh, lib source non CRT zero. So here's exit. Just uh, let's hack this up a bit. Byte OXFF OXO five or OX. We'll put. We'll have this do FFFF. And then we just have to build the make clean none garbage characters. Nineteen. Oh, yep. Okay. Done. Build. Okay, so now the exit is patched. So now the exit should cause an FF trap. Just end the fuzz case. We'll reset the fuzz case. Um, and now I think we have everything fuzzing. Might want to do a couple tests to see if our like seeks and reads are working correctly. Okay, yeah, we're getting fuzz cases. Yeah, we're getting a uh, trap. We're trapping at there. And do we already have FF? I'm surprised that's not screaming at us. Oh, yeah, and a fuzz case. We already marked that. <laughs> Shit. All right. Uh, okay, print. Comment these out. Comment that out. So now we're running the entirety of C tags for 6502, <laughs> which is a bit creative, interesting. Uh, let's go grab that latest program and labels and pop them in here. So we're not fuzzing yet, so I wouldn't expect to find any bugs. Fuzz case per second looks good. And then coverage is stable, which is expected. Okay, so let's pop this coverage in here. Sim parse, got symbols now, and color. So here we have our exit. Yep, we replaced that correctly. Okay, so here we have this. This goes into C tags main. That never returns out, um, which is fine. That does fine entries. Okay, so let's uh, let's get some mutation in here. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick bio break. I'll be right back.
All right, let's hack. Okay, uh, we just need to inject a valid input into here. So let's get our let's get our mutation strategy running. In this case, we don't need to. Honestly, we can just pre-inject the input at the input location. At the start of the fuzz case, um, we can just write the input directly in and mutate input.length. Okay, and okay, save the fuzz inputs. Okay, and we'll just get access to that. So store the input back there. And now that will cause different bytes to be written there. We just need to get the length here. Um, length is going to come from... Oh, let's do one final check. We'll do one final check. Uh, we're going to pass the dash... Um, actually, I kind of expect this to write to the tags file. Um, why is it not writing to the tags file? What do we do for writes? Writes should bubble up. And we should print those when we get writes. Why are we not getting writes here? Print write at... I'll just say write at. I'll do the trick. I kind of expect to see some writes going on. We are going into put entries. Uh, C entries. That's doing some good stuff. Once this is done. Oh, it's not calling put entries. What's... It doesn't like the file. It doesn't like the file. Oh, oh, big, big cheers coming in. Zippy zoom. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you for that. Big donos, number one dono. <laughs> <laughs> One second, I got a message here, sorry. Oh, more donuts coming in. Okay, so there's a chance that maybe our F read or open or you know, we could we could have a lot of different bugs here. So let's let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, I mean, we don't we don't often write bugs, so I'm kind of surprised here if there is a bug. That would be really surprising. <laughs> be really surprising. So, uh, char buff, uh, sixty four, uh. FD equals fopen test dot C R uh, F read buff one sixty four FD int bread bread is equal to this F close FD print F bread this colon this percent S We'll just uh, zero that out too. Ah, eh, fuck it. We'll do this. Uh, we'll do buff bread equal to zero if bread is greater than zero. Um, 
Uh, and then we'll print that. We'll print the bread and the buff. Oh my, oh, even more bits. <laughs> I applied for uh, Vuln Research Internships. Oh, okay. Uh, I also applied for Vuln Re Research Internships, so I'll be rich someday to get the big donuts. Oh, hell yeah. Land some, get that iOS full chain going, sell it for a cool one or two mil, whatever the current going price is. Get rid of that right at. See, let's see what we're printing. It looks like it's uh, looks like it's reading correctly. Bang keyboard. Oh, this is a DOS keyboard with Cherry MX Blues. Kind of old school. Um, I mean that looks good. That looks that looks healthy. That reading. Okay. Uh, F seek F D five seek set. We're doing some uh, unit tests uh, right now. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, that's fucked. All right, who, who was watching me write this code and didn't point out that I completely just ruined that? F seek five seek set. Uh, print F seek is at percent D this. Let's take a look. Who didn't tell me whatever bug I wrote, it's it's bad. See, cause that negative one, my ass. If it's not in use, bad F. If the end, if it wraps, offset plus count. If bread is greater than int max. Uh, end, if that's greater than Descriptor length, then we use descriptor length. Otherwise, we use end. End will be that minus offset. It's possible to seek past the end of a. F let's let's add some debug here. Uh, printf reading from file at percent uh, z z u. Sometimes things don't support z u, so we'll use uh, l u. Um, of length percent LU. We got the offset and the length here. I like that I can print all the way up. Uh, seek is there. Well, that's, we don't want read. We want seek. What's our issue in seek? Seeking file at... Isn't my casting, isn't my stupid casting stuff, is it this? If offset is greater than int max or the offset is less than int min. Well, that shouldn't be the case. We'll print the, we'll print the um, offset seeking file by this. I'm curious if for some reason this is where it's going awry. If the offset is greater than int max or it's less than int min. Okay, seeking file by five. That's exactly what I would expect. Then we get this. We look that up. Uh, seek set. If the offset is less than zero, return negative one. We're doing seek set, aren't we? Yeah. Offset is equal to that. If wince is equal to seek set. Oh. 
What? Uh... Okay, it's not that. Offset? What are what are these? If it's not in use, FD off is that minus the FD base? Print of bad F. Printf Uber. All right, which one of those is it? I mean, it could be this, but I don't think five is less than zero. Uber. What is int min? Yep, that. Okay. Uh, percent D, percent D, int max, int min. Let's play a game. If. The, if It's exactly what I would expect. All right, let's print. Uh, let's print offset here too. Is this some like uh, sign extension voodoo magic magic stuff? Wait, what? Oh, offset, yeah, that's definitely four bytes. Um, I guess, are these getting demoted? What's an offset? How do you print an offset? We'll, we'll bring this down a notch. Were those getting casted to an int implicitly? Okay. So are you guys' thoughts? Is five greater than 32,767 or is it less than negative 32,768? I, I personally do not think that is the case. If... Five is greater than int max. It's not. Or if five is less than int min, it's not. We got some cat. I I bet I bet there's some weird casting stuff going on here. But then how do I bounce check that damn thing? Is there a bug in this compiler with 32-bit uh, comparisons? Well, we're gonna have to go with this uh, main. Okay, so that looks better. Am I going crazy there? I think it can't do those... Uh... Yeah, this is never true. I guess we'll just get rid of it. I have some weird undefined behavior. It's... Yeah. It's weird having an offset greater than a size T. That makes things very uh, strange. Okay. Um... 
Crash read, accessing that. Too many entries to sort. That happens on a, on an allocation failure, and that's actually our crash. That's our null DRF. That's the null DRF that we, uh, that's a real bug in C tags. Okay, let's see what this is trying to access. Okay, boop, boop, boop. All right, apply some symbols. Okay, where are we crashing? Probably accessing some global, probably some state, some uh, V flag. Yeah, not a big problem. We can knock that one out real fast here. Uh, flag, 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 flag. Up here, we'll just set the V flag is equal to zero. X flag, yep, we set that. We're gonna have a lot of issues with some of these uh, different different flags, but this is this is about to write to a file, I think. Oh, that's the output. Hey, that's that's valid C tags output. That's well, that's doing C tags right there. Well, hell yeah. Okay. Feels good. Feels real good. I can get rid of the print. Okay, so that's that's parsing. That is actually parsing and producing a valid C tags output. So that's trying to write to the tags file. So it opened the tags file, truncated it, created it, and was trying to write that as the contents to that file. Um, and we hook all writes and they just kind of go to the screen. So regardless of if they're going to standard out or to a file. Um, okay, so there's a crash. That's a, that's a real crash that we know about. Um, that is due to, um, that crash is uh, a, a null DRF on an allocation failure. So we're gonna, we're gonna add some, um, mutation in here and once we have mutation we'll start to see some weird crashes so this is our like test input we're now gonna get the input from we'll grab it from uh, vm.fuzz inputs let input is equal to this we'll just grab the zeroth one they're all the same right now um, slice that up. So this will cause us to inject that input. Mutable borrow occurs here. Ah, uh, you're gonna be a meanie, aren't you? Ah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Then we can take it. Okay, 447 dot as ref dot unwrap and 535. Nice. Oh, um, 535. Port crashes. This will take option, evacuate inputs, 
dot as ref dot unwrap. Easy. Maybe not. Reference. Okay, 743. Uh, dot as ref dot unwrap. 773. Oh, yep, we had code duplication here. Yep, this is what happens when you do code duplication. Then everything kind of sucks more. Okay, nice. All right, uh, 307. Here we'll do a dot take. And at the end we'll do a vm dot fuzz inputs zero equals inputs. Dot on wrap. Okay, 396. Um, can I do this? No. Um, let fuzz input is equal to fuzz input dot as mute on ramp. Okay, this should be generating random stuff to jam in there. We'll write it in. Technically, we don't need to write it in here, so we'll get rid of that. Make sure that it's sane. Max input size. Good. All right, we'll see if, this, uh, if there are bugs here. Coverage is going up. That's a good sign when you're fuzzing. So we're probably going to see a couple crashes pretty soon here. We'll probably see that null deref. We'll probably see some other flags and other optional state get used. Um, we're at 4,000 coverage now. Okay, let's pull some threads online. Let's bring uh, 256 threads online. That's a real crash. That's the null deref. I expect to see some globals get accessed or something here. I don't know if this, uh, so let's take a look at C tags. So we're not passing any different command line options, but that's not a huge deal. Um, so this will go and call this will call find entries. Find entries is how it determines which function to use. So if there's a dot in the file name, if it is one or if it's L and there's nothing else then it is a dot l file okay and there'll be lisp a uh, yak will be a dot y and a fortran will be a dot ch us uh, wait what otherwise if it's a c if it's not a C and it's non H, it's a Fortran. So C and H files or are parsed as C. Anything else is Fortran. Y files are Yax. L are Lex. So we need uh we need to mutate the file name 
Otherwise, we're not actually going to see that that stuff getting covered. And we just have that one unique crash so far. Uh, perf is looking okay, about 40,000 a second. Um, that's not terrible since we're doing a lot more emulation than we were before. Um, not super happy with it, but but this architecture is... The perf is just going to be terrible on 6502. <laughs> Like the operations we're doing are going to be so complex compared to uh, to what they could be. Not having registers, everything being tiny bitwise, uh, like in terms of number of bits. Okay, so let's throw in simparse. Okay, we got symbols. Pull down that coverage. Here's the latest coverage. All right. Let's go into main. That calls ctags main, does nothing else. And in here, we ended up, uh, okay, so this is pledge. This is on a pledge failure. Yeah, this is if pledge fails. Pledge won't fail. Um, this is gonna be the address of this will be the address of like the error message at 6394. This will be pledge. Yep. So that's a pledge error. That's never going to happen because we don't return an error from pledge. Um, okay. Here, this is checking uh, store to head. Okay. So let's take a look. I just want to see if anything's going on here. Nope. Okay, so then in here, we're going to do uh, get opt. Uh, there's going to be some failure cases. We don't pass any options in, so none of this code's going to get hit. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. So, uh, and that's exit. Okay, in this case, we're going to call init. This is checking the V flags and the different flags. We don't set any of those flags, so we're not going to see any of these situations here. Um, um, any, okay. And this is preload entries. Once again, this is a, this is an option. We don't pass this. We'll never hit this. Then down here, this is, um, this is if open failed, we'll have a warning and we'll print the message. We never have the open fail. So that's not a thing. Okay, down here we have our exit. Here we have uh, a failure to open, which we will never have. In this case, we have put entries coming from, if the X flag is set, we'll never hit that. So I'm not, I'm not upset yet with any of these results. They all look good. Looks like we're hitting pretty much everything that we can hit in here. Find entries. This is going to figure out what the file type is. Uh, it looks like it is always finding that it is a C file, uh, which makes sense because we pass in .c. In this function, uh, we're hitting pretty much everything uh, up here. This is uh, comparing x. x was loaded from here. Um, not quite sure what that is. That's looking for an equal sign. There's a chance that we've never seen that. Um, down here we have basically perfect coverage. Here we're not hitting this. This is on a load Y7. I think a lot of these are probably going to be options but I'm not 100% sure on these. Okay, we've got a couple things here we're missing. I thought I looked at a couple of these and these were due to um, configuration. BNE here. Let's see. That gets inf. Get C. Let's 
trying to see where where these uh, code paths are coming from. I'm trying to see if this is uh, if this is something that we can we can fix uh, with by by setting some flags. Then we have the return paths. BNE branch not equal. That's on a load A. So this would only get set in this case, and that would only get set in one of these cases. This is doing a branch equal on a load A, which would come from these. So like a lot of these are propagating up, and this is on a mem compare. What are we mem comparing? Oh, is this gonna look for like struct and some other things? We might have to uh, find some strings. Uh, we could run strings on this binary, see what kind of strings there are enum tags real yeah we could throw these strings in there as a dictionary uh there's probably like some structures and stuff some code paths we wouldn't hit looks like coverage has plateaued um okay uh so since that's the case uh what we're gonna want to do uh, we're going to want to do some mutations on the file name because we want the file name to uh, potentially have that last character changed. And then we also want to... Um, what are these on? Uh, load AXYSP. Yeah, there's just a, there's a little bit of code we're missing here that we're going to want to get uh, fixed up right soon. LDY... Uh, 35, push, X, Y, S, P, what's A, 1, is that 135, O, X, 1, O, 3, 5, no, okay, yep, coverage seems to be stuck, so yeah, we have a couple of those things that we'll want some like dictionary stuff on. I don't have my register coverage and stuff implemented, so I can't solve through mem compares yet. What's this? Get line. LDA. LDA. Mem compare. This is checking uh oh six one C five. It's doing a mem compare of an enum. Okay. We can make that work. We can grab some of these strings. Um, what about this one? That was the same one. So we'll probably have like enum and struct and a couple things in there that'll get mem compared. Uh, a couple of these things. So this one is a OX61A9. Type def, define, struct, union, enum. These are probably all the things that can uh, actually get used. Um, so we'll want a random chance of, of whacking those somewhere in our input. Uh, we can also modify the file name and the file name we discovered. So we can run strings on this and grab, we can just grab all these strings. This'll, this'll do the trick for strings. And then for entries, uh, if it doesn't have a dot, then it's a C file. Otherwise, L, Y, C, H, or anything else. Okay. So if I do dot L, it'll be... If I do L, it will go through the Lisp stuff. If Sturcher... If Sturcher for one of these. So it's going to look for something that looks lispy. And if it finds any one of these characters in the file, then it will parse it as a lisp file. So I think we're fine there. So I need to get the file name into the fuzz case. How do I want to do that? How do I want to deliver the file name in? Right now I'm passing this arg structure. Ah, oh, shit, I can, I can just flip that right outside. No problem. No problem. 
So now I don't want to modify this binary anymore. I want to leave the binary just in the same place uh, as it pretty much always is. Um, so these like are pretty straightforward. Um, okay. So I want to kind of keep this binary around. I don't want to keep rebuilding this binary as I have to keep reloading it in IDA. Uh, I want to start focusing on this now that it seems to be working. Um, we're going to take a look at main. This is going to, I'm guessing this is the address. Not quite. Um, is that the address of an address? Store A. Deck SP, C tags main. Where is it getting the address? I think that's an address. That's an offset. That's an offset to that. That's an offset to test.c. Yeah. This is our this is our argc right here. Or our argv. So I want to flip this this byte right here. Uh that is at Let's see, that is at 616F. So we'll do a, we'll just, we'll flip that randomly. We won't store it with our input, which is a really bad idea, but uh, it'll be good enough. So we'll do force online vert adder this. We're gonna write in a single character and it's going to be, um, we'll just write in a random character. I don't really care, right? I don't really care. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, randomly flip the extension character. Oh, you can type character with one hand. Character. That's pretty neat. Cool. Um, right force 616F. Uh, VM ran. Just, just, just flip that shit. All right. I just want to see more coverage. I want to see if we're gonna get some like more globals getting accessed. Uh, what's this complaint about? We got a borrow going on. Problem solved. What was that assembly editor I was using? Are you talking about, uh, whoa. Yep, we're gonna have some UTF-8 errors. Uh, one second, uh, string from UTF-8 lossy. And that needs to be this. And, yep, that's a cow. Um, were you talking about this in here? This is called Ida. This is uh, the interactive disassembler. Um, it's mainly just for disassembly uh, unexpected file name. Okay, so if the file name dot starts with test dot, good enough. Good enough for us. But yeah, this is uh, Ida Pro. It's uh, just a disassembler. Uh, right now we're looking at 6502. Um, it's pretty awesome. It's it's really fun to work with. Okay, let's see. Let's get these online. Come on. Uh, uh, foo5. So that means we had a function that we've never seen before in our uh, foo5. Oop, sterl copy. Okay, so we see our normal crash here, which is fine. But we see a foo5 at 1 AAF. Um, yep, so that's just in sterl copy. So sterl copy, I think, is the same as stir sterton copy, except it will always null terminate. Let me double check. So we got to take a look at uh, man3 stir stern copy. So stern copy copies not more than length characters from the source to dest. If it's less than length characters long, it fills the remaining, if it's less, wait, what, really? 
fills it with zeros? I didn't know that. If source is less than len characters long. Wow. If the length of source is greater than or equal to that, it will not be null terminated. So sterl copy is the same thing as stern copy, but it will always null terminate. So, and this was, this is a, um, this is not a standard library thing. I think only OpenBSD has this. Um, so sterl copy and sterl cat. Yep. So copy and concatenate. They're designed to be safer, more consistent, and less prone replacements for stern copy and stern cat. Uh, sterl copy copies up to dest size minus one characters from the string source to dest, null terminating if the result, uh, if the dest size is not zero. So we just have to implement those semantics. It's not too hard. Uh, if dest size is equal to zero, return zero. What does it return? Uh, N, okay, it's equal to, wow, those, uh, if the return value is greater than equal to dest size, it's been truncated. It's the caller's responsibility to handle this. Okay, yep. I think it's just the number of bytes that have been copied. So, uh, it should be a replacement, a direct replace. So if the dest size is equal to zero, if the dest size is equal to zero, return zero. Otherwise, we're gonna do a stern copy into des from source of des size minus one. And then we'll do des, des size minus one is equal to zero. So we'll always null terminate. And then uh, we'll do like size t ret is equal to this. We gotta si uh, ret sign this up here and ret so i think this is fine stern copy of that desk size minus one and then we just null terminate it desk source desk size minus one and we always make sure that we null terminate it while the other one does not i think i think this is fine i, th I think this is fine called undefined function yep uh, include string dot h 68 does that return a pointer you uh, really oh I think it yeah it does doesn't it um it's the number of bytes that were copied man three stir copy It returns dest. Okay, so we're gonna do um, size t len stir it'll copy and all that. Yeah, so copy and concatenate strings. Does the second parameter copies up to dest size? Uh, Copies up to desk size minus one characters from the string. Source to desk, null terminate if the results. Okay. So if it's that, uh, we can just do this. Uh, ii for ii equals zero. ii is less than desk size. ii plus plus. And we still want this. If Desk size is equal to zero, return zero. Okay, so in, in this case, we'll go desk size minus one. Then I'll do uh, desk equals source. If not times desk, ah. I'm going to do this because it's, it's a little bit more clear. 
if this is equal to zero, return. Um, and we're going to go by offsets, ii. So if the destination ii, zero, is equal to zero, then we're going to return ii. And we copied that many bytes. So if the first byte is zero, then we return zero. If the first, uh, if the oneth indexed byte <laughs> is zero, then we'll return one, uh, which means one character was copied, which is true. Okay, in the end case, if we make it to here, then we're forcibly null terminating it. So we're gonna do dest, dest size minus one is equal to zero. And we're gonna return dest size bytes were copied. Uh, dest size minus one bytes were copied. I think that has the right semantics. Looks good to me, it builds, so you know it's good. Uh, if the dest size is zero, return zero. Otherwise, go through all of them up to dest size minus one, copying the dest, uh, the source into the dest. If the dest is null terminated, then return out. Otherwise, uh, we're going to end up null terminating it by force, and then we'll return dest size minus one as the number of copied bytes. Looks good to me. Maybe. Okay. We got a null, null DRF, a little null ED. And hopefully we're going to have a bit more coverage now. And then we'll throw in that dictionary too. I think dictionary is next, then flags. A couple command line flags might help us out. Um... We're gonna take, uh, we'll grab these symbols. Take a look here. We'll grab that latest coverage, pull that in, scoop it over. Uh, coverage, boop, 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 boop. Color, nice, main, C tags, main. Okay. Okay, we're not hitting any of that stuff because that's arg parsing. Then we go into here, find entries. At the end, we're gonna have put entries. Put entries, we're probably hitting a, a decent amount of stuff. X flag, V flag, we're not, we don't have the X or the V flag, so we're missing all of that stuff. Um, I'm guessing that this one, that's checking, I think for a stack overflow or a stack overrun. No, that's at store 88.89. Okay. Not quite sure there. Coverage is looking good. 47.10 blocks or uh, PCs. And find entries. But I don't really expect any bugs in this code base because it, it just, it doesn't really do any pointer work. But we're set up in a good spot to look at something that does. In fact, we're probably going to whack in the, the uh, dictionary attack stuff, and then we'll probably try and find a better target. So just because it's not doing any pointer arithmetic in here, it's doing everything by get C and unget C, and those are fine. Like, you're, you're not really going to have bugs reading and writing files, so, or corruption bugs, by reading and writing single characters as a return value because there's no buffering going on. Uh, that was due to memcompare up here. Okay. So we got some more coverage that just came in, hot off the press. But things are looking kind of good in there. C entries. Oh, we're not hitting the other paths. We're not hitting the L entries. Why not? Oh, we're flipping the wrong byte now. Uh, yeah, because this, uh, this changed, so the test.c is at a different location. Let's look at strings. Test.c, right here, 6238. we got to change that hard-coded address. Bada-bing. Okay. 
And our still copy should be implemented correctly, so that's good. Just chugging along now. I gotta have this JIT cache some stuff. Taking way too long to start up. But there we go. We've got a lot more coverage now. We're definitely hitting the other paths. Um, have that one null DRF that we know and love. I'm gonna clear the crashes folder just in case we get one. Okay, so we have uh, we have an access of 686A. I'm guessing that is a global out F, the output file. Um, okay, so that is happening in here, 45AF. Put entries. Oh, that might be a bug. That might that might be a bug. So there seems to be some state that we can get to put entries without an output file created, which means that accessing this is an uninitialized uh, uninitialized uh, read, which which is fine. It's it's initialized to null. I don't think it will actually have a, a negative effect. Um, but um out f push ax and what's it gonna do Sear surchar f printf it's gonna do an f printf and this file filled to open which means that that file was never filled in so let's see, uh, put entries, C tags are, okay, so we have put entries here, if, okay, so this is going to go to the out F, and I guess there's a way that put entries can get called without that output file being open. Yeah, I'd call that a bug. Um, and it's probably not in the C stuff because we're not hitting that when we're fuzzing only C. So I'm guessing that it's in one of these different formats. One of these, so that one doesn't touch it at all. Um, what are these? Throw in lines up to double, okay. So out f is initially, so it's opened here, and then put entries is called. If it failed, well, I don't, I don't see how, if x flag, but x flag is never set, does someone else call this? Okay, um, RG put entries. Tree.c put entries. So this calls it. Too many entries for, uh, too many entries to sort. This is actually where the null DRF is, um, but if that allocation failed, on a later note, then it would hit put entries and put entries would try to write to a file and that file has not been open yet. And that would cause a failure. What happens if you F printf to null? That also is probably a bug. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be a bug, so. Okay, so that's using, so basically if you're creating these things, it tries to put the tree 
Um, and then that will cause out f to be used when it's not initialized. So that is that bug. All right, we're still getting some coverage increases. Looking pretty good. Nothing crazy. Uh, let's take a look at what coverage looks like now. And is this the one where we have a uh, strill copy? Yes, it is. Okay. So I can grab, uh, scoop that over, grab coverage, paste, copy, replace, and color it up. All right. So now we are hitting probably like everything in. Okay. Yep. We're hitting L entries. Yeah. And this function, we're now hitting basically everything. Uh, in fact, there's not a single miss block in here except for this. And that will only happen if PF functions um, or A. I don't even know why that's a MIT because it's, I don't, I don't know how you could OR a value at 90 and get zero. Um, so I don't think that condition is even possible in any way. Because that is trying to or, um, yeah, that or's the A register. And then if it's B and E is if the zero flag is set and that's impossible. So actually, what about this one? Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, or A, maybe that sets it differently. Because how would this one hit both spots? Or A, or A with 90, if it's not equal to zero, if it's, where does the zero flag come from in that case? Hmm. Let's take a look. The zero flag is set based on the results. Shouldn't be possible to go down this path. This is probably used somewhere else. Someone else probably branches into that, maybe? Maybe? I'm really confused at what that's what's that what that is doing. Huh. Something something I don't understand there. Okay. But uh, all we care about are the entry functions. So you got C entries. This is the C parser. This is the biggest one of all of them. Uh, we're missing a couple things in here. Line number, if it's not equal. So if the line number is I, oh, that's on an overflow of line number. So it's going to increment the next thing. So that's if you have 60, uh, if, if you have over 256 lines, uh, which we just never have. Um, a better a better mutator would, would hit that with some repetition. Here we have a, a branch we're not hitting. Um, this is loading Y at 80, if not equal. To sequence AX uh, seven. <sighs> I'm not sure what that is. I feel like they load A like very early on with something. So like this is loading. Load A based on the stack and Y. So this is loading 3B off the stack. So this is a, a, a local 3B. So we can go find who writes to that. Um, who writes to that stack local?
Load Y, or I guess it will not, in this case, compare that if it's not equal, if it is equal, load. Yeah, I don't know who fills that in on the stack. We haven't had a coverage increase, same amount of crashes. Uh, okay. Get line. So let's take a look in there where get line can happen. In c.c, get line can happen in a couple spots. Okay, so we're not seeing get line like anywhere. I don't think uh, we have coverage of one get line out of three. Yep, there are three get lines and we only see one of them. So one of them is, if not level and token, and that, and that will call funk entry. Okay, so funk entry, uh, we see that one. So that one we have coverage of. This one we don't have coverage of. So this is the one that does PF note, which is here. So this one, happens on the end of a type def. Okay, so we're not hitting a type def. Sure. Okay, and then we're also not hitting a... Yeah, we're definitely not hitting any of these cases. So by banging some of those strings in, we should hopefully get a little bit more coverage. So we know that we need a couple of the strings in here. Um... So define struct. Yeah, there are a bunch of things we're probably missing in those because then these sub functions are going to do some fun stuff like, uh, uh, where was it? Stir entry. Yeah, we're not hitting this at all. And that's some fun stuff going on in there. Ooh, that's some meat right there. So preload entries. Okay, so then... This is in the L. Oh, we're not hitting anything. You know what that means. There's a compare. Let's see what happens in L entries. There's a compare that happens almost right away. Ooh, this one, this one's looking better. Uh, okay, a def. Okay. And then method, wrapper, whopper. Oh, we got pointer arithmetic in this one. Not reached. Okay. Just look for def or def. Okay. Um, that function doesn't do too much. So put entries. Yep. Y entries. Once again, we're missing this entire parser. Okay. Perfect. So tag y entries. While it's not equal to EOF. Really? Why are we not getting anywhere on this? Load y 35. Okay. While the get C is not equal to the EOF, switch the character. Skip key on get C. This is Y, yeah. L Y six. That's a stack reference. Uh, compare X with zero. So if the get C What is this function? So got a bunch of loops and we get C. If it's not equal, then go here. If it is equal, then we go here. So have we never, 
Have we never done a get C? That would indicate that get C, F get C, that's taken I and F, the input file. Is that never, it's always getting an EOF from F get C. Or a negative one. Um, hmm. All right, so we've got a we got a lot of stuff here we're missing. So this one we're gated by compares. This one we have a couple compares, and this one I still don't know. F get C. It's just always failing. Bool and E. Uh, B and E. So that's basically a B and E branch, if not equal. That's based on flags, which came from here. Compare X. If it's not equal, then we go here. If it's not equal, load X zero, transfer X to A. So A will then be zero. If it's equal to zero, which it will always be. Okay. So for some reason, we can never read a Y file. Huh. Huh. I don't know why that is happening. Let me, uh, let me hard code some of these different things that we can use. So character is gonna be a C, H, uh, a C, a Y, an L. DRF that by three, C, Y, L. I think those are the only types, C, Y, and L. So now we're going to specifically pick those. So we're gonna drill. We were making a lot of invalid ones, which means we were hitting the C parser a lot heavier than all of the other ones. Um, 5546 was our previous best coverage. We'll see if we surpass that. Null DRF. That's our other DRF. That is on outputs. Unless this is always crashing. It's possible this is always maybe crashing. That calls read. Huh. What do we have before? 5546, so we're still pretty far off our, our best coverage. Fifty-two, fifty-two. 52, 52. It was just C, Y, and L, right? Let me double check. Uh, find entries. dot l files dot y files c files and then everything else will go into the other one so we need one other character that's neither of those or none of those so we'll just say uh we'll say an r file okay now we're hitting them correctly we're potentially missing some of those functions uh I have no idea why we're not getting deeper into L entries because we're not having any issues with all the other, or L entries, I know, I, uh, Y entries. 
I don't know why that read is always failing. Got our null DREF. There we go. Coverage going up. We know we hit like 55 something something. We massively improved the fuzzer performance by focusing it on these different characters. Um, so I'll be curious if that gets us any more coverage. 55, 15, what did we have before? 55, 46. So 55, 46 is kind of the number to beat. Got a little bit more there. 55, 45. So we, oh, 55, 49. Okay, we have more coverage than we've ever seen before. That's a good sign. So we improved our fuzzer. <laughs> 5549 is the new winner. But I don't know why. I mean, we, we literally like 200x the perf effectively there. Color. But we still never make it past here. F get C is always failing. 5553. Why is that always failing? Why is that always failing? Let's take a look at our uh, get C. Uh, this is just calling read. Like inf should be set up by then. 5560. Let's take a look at uh, who calls L entries. L entries is called on a searcher if any of these exist in the input file. Is that just that rare? Searcher. It just looks for one of those characters. Oh, the file has to start with one of those. Yeah. So the first thing in the file inf So if it's not white space, then it will rewind back and break out, and then the break will cause... Okay, so this is looping, and this is searching for... Why are these like indentations so hard to read? Uh, if it's not white space, then it will rewind and go back. Otherwise, if it is white space, if it's equal to EOF, it will return out. Otherwise, uh, consume white space. Once white space has been consumed, break out. So this will find the first non-white space character. And if the first non-white space character is a semicolon, a parenthesis, or an open bracket, then we go into L entries. And then in this case, we're going to do an ftel. We're going to do an F gets. Wait, Y entries is the one we're missing. Let's take a look at L entries. So L entries was working, right? L entries was good until this first compare, which is going to be uh, on death. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Two unique crashes. We have more coverage than ever. Y entries is the is the one that is messing us up. So Y entries. If it's this, we only search the third part of a yak file for C references. This may be wrong. Okay. Uh, Throw away lines up to the next new line percent percent new line. So this has to find. Look at the state machine. 
Oh my god. Uh, yeah, so basically... It will consume a lot of the file. And then it will do a sterl copy of that. So we need a magic string, and that will get us a lot more coverage there. So that's the issue on that one. So all of the issues that we're seeing due to not having coverage are due to comparisons with uh, kind of unique byte strings. So let's take a look. Do we have everything in here? I think we're going to manually uh, type these out. So I know there's like people do the dictionary stuff, but I typically am not a huge fan of those sorts of things. Um, they seem to kind of hurt uh, when you do like a, a full strings of a binary. It's just not as focused as what it could be. So we're going to take a look at... Um, we're going to look at L entries and we're going to look at all these strings. So we're going to make a string database. So we're going to make uh, const good strings is a list of strings. And, and here we'll have... We're just going to kind of read through this code base and find some fun strings. So we'll find def. That's good. Uh, method. Okay, big fan. Wrapper. Whopper. Is that actually a thing, Whopper? And that's it for quotes. We've got def. That's case insensitive compare is what that's going to be the CI compare, uh, method, wrapper, and whopper. So when I get register covered, it would actually find these things automatically for us. Um, but to get that, I need the, I need the um, differential coverage stuff working. And that's just kind of a day of work that I haven't gotten to yet on this project. OK. So then we have another. In fact, these are going to be byte slices. Okay, then we're going to have a new line, percent, percent, new line. Uh, new line, percent, percent, new line. Okay. What else do we got? Uh... Okay, so that was everything in here. Then we have percent percent dollar. Okay, we'll do that. I don't think it's actually using that, but hey. PF note YY Lex. Okay, that's the name. I see. Uh percent percent dollar again down here. Uh toss YY. Okay, YY parse. Y entries. Okay. So L entries here. We got all those. Y entries. Looks good. Looks like we have everything in Y entries. And C entries is just the last one. We just need a couple of these strings. This project, the vectorized emulation stuff. Okay. This specific implementation of vectors emulation has not. I haven't yet implemented. Uh, I haven't yet implemented it. Okay. Uh, B union. The old version did have it. Okay. Attribute. If I see it, I'll put it. Uh, define. Struct. Key. Okay, that's everything. Those are all the, like, good strings. So we were at 5573 coverage. We're going to kind of keep note of that. Old coverage. And now we're going to implement a, uh, we're going to just randomly inject these. 
So for and zero dot dot vm dot rand mod four inject strings up to four times per file. And then um, we're going to pick a string. So string is equal to vm.rand mod good strings.len good strings reference this. Then we'll find a let injection point is going to be equal to vm.rand mod um, mutate input.len that will get a random injection point then we're going to get uh, remain is equal to mutate input.len uh, and we're only going to do this if we have an input of course so we're doing only in place mutations right now we'd also want to stretch the file out eventually but whatever not a big deal um Get an injection point, uh, compute the number of remaining bytes, then we're going to, to inject. This is going to be equal to uh, standard compare min of string.len and remain. And then we'll do a mutate input from injection point to injection point plus to inject. Uh, dot copy from slice and then we'll slice up the string to to inject bytes That looks about good enough first try Pick a random string pick a random location get the number of remaining bytes uh, Get the strings length or the remain whichever smaller copy that in in the injection point from the string Done. Easy. <clears throat> uh, what's this? We got cra we got crashes. Look at our coverage. We had fifty we had fifty five seventy three and now we're at sixty two fifty four and climbing. Sixty three hundred. A uh, pretty significant increase of coverage. We've got something here that's really not happy. Um, oh, this is an L buff. Okay. These are all uninitialized reads in L buff. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, tag L buff. This is the line buffer. So, lots of uninitialized accesses to the L buff. Um, it's not a big deal because technically it's zeroed out in the BSS. Um, so, I think we're just going to mark that as initialized. There's also a read at zero. Yeah, there's a, a no null DRF. We actually reported that one yesterday. Okay, coverage is looking great here. Um, all of these so far have been in accessing LBuff. And let's see what this is doing. Sterl copy. Like, in a, if, if that were allocated on the heap, if LBuff were allocated on the heap from a malloc, these would all be, like, real bugs. Um, uninitialized reads. Obviously, they wouldn't... It's not leaking this information back. Um, so I'm guessing L entries probably uses L buff. F gets into L buff, and then, oh, yeah. Wow. I think if you fill this up, does that go out of bounds? That might go out of bounds if you fill it up. Because here it's just... Because it will f gets the whole size of the buffer, and then I think it's just gonna keep parsing. 
I don't see a bounce check on L buff. And I don't think F gets... Does F gets guaranteed null terminate? If F gets doesn't guarantee null terminate, then uh, that's potentially a, an out of bounds on the uh, globals. So I think we're going to calic. We're going to do a calic of L buff uh, and do a rebuild. So 65, 83 coverage, a lot more coverage. Fuck yeah. That's what I like to see. Uh, L buff here. So here we're going to make L buff. Oh, uh, that one size of L buff. We're going to set this to this. L buff will be null. It'll start off as null. And then we're going to fill in L buff. Uh, we're going to fill in. Oh, this is the wrong version. Uh, where's our version? Uh, let's see tags. Here, we'll do lbuff equals calic of line max. Yep. And then lbuff instead will be a null. And we have to look for all references to lbuff because, um, Okay, size of L buff. Like all of these things that use size of L buff have to be replaced. What's Fortran? Okay, Fortran, Lisp. Okay. All right. Otherwise, we'd have to like put something after it. I want to see if this goes out of bounds. So I'm explicitly going to put it in a, a heap allocation. And then we're going to replace all of these with a um, line max, which is the allocation size of L buff. Okay. And we want to do this. I kind of want that RG up in here. Okay. So starts off as null, we calic that, uh, L buff. If not L buff, uh, exit zero, just fail. If that happens, uh, line max, line max, line max, uh, C tags dot H. And gross L buff pointer. Okay, done. Then we have C tags lisp L buff line max C tags Fortran L buff and E C tags print. L buff. If it's less than n line, count is less than n line. Do those have to be the same number? Stir dupe L buff. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna zero initialize that string, and people are gonna use it, and we're gonna see if we go out of bounds on it. I think we will. I think there's out of bounds accesses on that. So this is this is basically how I fuzz. I, I basically take code I'm looking at and I augment it to make it crash harder and harder and harder. Okay, here we go. We have an, a right out of bounds on the heap here. Um. Uh, 
Uh, let me update the shit. That's like a that's like a real bug, potentially. Let's uh, let's check it out. That might be a global out of bounds, right? Uh, where are my files at? I want to test app debug labels kernel program. Okay, this. Okay. Let's take a look. So. Uh, we have a read here trying to deref this. What's this? A uh, D flag. Okay. Yep, that's fine. That's that's just a zero. But this one is writing out of bounds. Of course, it's just writing to a generic thing. Um, uh, 32 hex. Is that 50? That is. 32 hex, 50. Yep. Um, and let's double check. So we have one that checks for end line. Let's make sure that line max and end line are the same. Uh, end line. End line. Max length of a pattern. So we made some customizations here. There's a chance that we introduced a bug uh, with our customizations. Our coverage is actually a lot lower here, too. I think we're always crashing, maybe. Um, okay, so by default, max token was 250, so we're going to set this to 70. And then here, in missing headers, we have line max and max name len. Let's check what these are in OpenBSD. Uh, user include tags, tag this. So line max is typically 2048. So let's set that to usually 2048. So we'll set this to 100. So it's larger than everything else. Um, actually, we'll set it to 64 and we'll set this to 60. I just want to make sure that all, all of them are at least one byte apart if they are different. So, line max is 2048. Let's see if there are other. Nope. Uh, max name len. Typically 255. Also 255 there. Usually 255. So, we'll set this at 62. Um, then we'll look at end line. Uh, max token. Okay, so those are all from here. So that's 50. And then we have max token, which is 60. 62, 64. Default, that's 250. So now we're going to build this. We have a, everything slightly different. And I'm curious if we're still going to get that crash. Um, we just kind of fudge these numbers so they're not equal anymore. So end line, max token. That will cause this to end earlier. Typically that's 50, and in this case, this is much bigger. So line max is the size that it allocates, right? That was what it was using everywhere. Okay, we got our null DRF. Don't you need to update where you munch the file extension because the address changed? You got me. You got me. Thank you. Thank you. We'll we'll go grab that. We'll grab the latest. Um, take a look. Take a little look see here. Thank you for that. Top over here. Boop. Du, du. I'm glad people are paying that much attention where you where you notice stuff like that. That's really cool. 
Uh, 62 F3. All right. Yeah, basically, any time that coverage number drops, that's probably the issue. So, I, re I really need to, like, resolve that symbol. Or I need to probably assert. I could I could probably assert that it's a, a C there, like a dot C, test dot C. Um, and then I, I would panic at runtime. Uh, currently thinking about a fuzzing topic for my bachelor thesis. Uh, did you come across a topic that would be interesting? Um, there are a bunch of things that I find interesting in fuzzing. It's it's hard to kind of come up with one off the top of my head. Okay, uh, yeah, we still have an oob. Uh, that's now our right, an oob read. So we've got an access of this field. What is this structure in? No fucking idea. And what is this one? No idea here either. Let's take a look. See. Uh, oh, oh! I don't have I don't have symbols. I was like, man, what on earth is that? Okay, that's the D flag. Okay, so we have a couple crashes here. We have a null DRF. That's a real bug. We have this one, which is an output file um, uninitialized use. We have a read here. Um, that's an out of bounds read on the that location, and then we have a D flag. Okay, so it does look like we do have an out of bounds read on that, um, and the out of bounds write probably went away as we changed that token size. So I could try and put guard bytes after it. Um, I mean, this is this is just better by having it on the heap. Hey, we just got a little bit more code coverage. That's kind of neat. Sixty-six seventy-five. That's looking that's looking pretty good. So let's go uh, let's go null out that um, file descriptor. I think that probably is gonna cause a crash. So twenty-six ninety-nine. See, we just got a Nessie here. When you get coverage and the feedback will usually pick it up. So it like got a small increase and then that fed back into another increase. So it's probably like it got past a branch and then that gotten in a state to get past another branch quickly after that. Um, that's something you typically see with, with feedback driven fuzzing. So yeah, we just have those uh, uh, four crashes right now. We could go patch those crashes out. Um, that is a that is typically a good way of, of doing things. So, yeah, is it possible that that file is not open? Why are we having an uninitialized read of that? So we looked into it. It was in um, put entries here. So it's possible to call put entries from a couple locations and. Um, e tree dot c put entries here could get called in pf note and pf note could get called prior so put entries would then cause uh, a use of a nulled out uh, output file so let's go uh, let's go patch our bugs so we've got a couple bugs we know that this output file could be null so we're gonna say if if not head or not um, if not head put entries which I think is the patch that was discussed today let me check um, Oh, you know what? This mailing list is uh, currently out. So let's see if I can find... Here we go. Bugs. Marks and read-only. Okay, is there another one? 
someone else archiving these. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is the bug report I wrote. Uh, and this was the happens only if a malloc at an early stage fails. It's a very special case. Uh, fix looks correct. Um, so the patch that they're going to implement is if head put entries head. So if head, so they're only going to call this if head exists. And then I would further suggest to add a patch here of else if um, out f, because it's possible to get to that state um, without out f being set. Uh, else if out f. Right. Let's uh, let's let's not introduce that patch yet. So we're gonna patch the the one bug the the way that they recommended, uh, which was uh, if head. Yep. So this is effectively what it will look like probably in a couple days. Then we have put entries here, and then we have another bug here where we have out f used uninitialized, and in this case it's null. So I'm going to set up that flag, or I'm going to set that up. Um, shit, I patched the wrong file. I'm going to close this. This is too dangerous. Okay. So in, this is in uh, tree.c. Yep. So we'll say if head, tab that in. That is the patch that they're going to do. Okay, now in here, out f is going to be null. So, and let's verify that that will actually crash. So we'll set uh, i, what is it? Put entries out f. Okay, so out f we're going to initialize to null. Okay. Still a fuzzing noob. Does it take uh, snapshots and then fuzz from that branch? Um, in this case, it does not because uh, we haven't set that up. But that is typically kind of one of the next steps I would take when fuzzing. So I would typically like put some snapshots in at certain branch points. And then I'd reset to those very specific branch points to fuzz. Uh, for example, I would fuzz the C file. Um, okay, so 50 DE. Uh, this is going to be in. Uh, this is definitely going to be in, in uh, probably open or uh, print. And we got a couple more reads coming in here. Okay, so we need to get the right symbols. We're up to three unique crashes, and uh, we screwed up the um, the test dot c again. So, uh, okay. Um, So yeah, there are a couple things we're gonna have to polish up. So 50 DE, uh, let's go double check that. I'm pretty sure that's the null DRF. So I'm going to grab those. Okay. Okay. Okay, and let's take a look at our crashes. So we have a crash at 50 DE accessing null. I'm guessing this is probably uh, a printf. I, interesting. That's VF printf. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing that's dereferencing the, that's definitely a null DRF on that file descriptor. So we can go clean that up. That should be a, uh, an easy fix. Um, then we have a crash here on the W flag, the W flag, as well as, oh, that was the same one. And then we also have, so the W flag and the D flag will initialize to zero. Those aren't real bugs. Um, D flag is equal to zero. W flag is equal to zero. That's just due to how strict, uh, we kind of implemented our code base. Um, all, all uninitialized reads from the BSS are causing faults. 
Um, and then we're going to implement a patch as well on, on that printf. So tag put entries. In here, we're going to say else if out f. And that should fix that bug. So we now have fixed, I think, all of the bugs that are OK. And now I have to fix that address up. So let's go grab these. The new kernel, labels. In this case, I'm not even going to load it in uh, the right format. I'm just going to get the test.c. Apparently, test.c didn't show up in this mode. That's kind of strange. It's just a string. No need to be so scared. Test, okay, 6327. Okay, so I could give it a more unique file name and then just search for that in memory, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Dude, you are insane. Hope, hope I'll be like you one day. You absolutely will. You'll probably surpass me. Ah, we do have a crash here still. Okay. Just keep, just keep learning and hacking, and most importantly, have some fucking fun. This stuff, doing this stuff is so unbelievably fun that there's... You know, just just exploit that. Exploit the fact that, like, jobs exist out there where you can just, like, hack shit. Like, how 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 cool is that? We live in a, an age where, like, security researchers are, like, interviewed on TV because they have important opinions and, and they get paid a shit ton because they are of value to society. Um, <laughs> you're telling me you're not... Fuzz and open BSDC tags for fame and fortune. I think, I think this is a uh, way up there at the at the top of uh, Zerodium. They're like their bug periodic uh, table, the things that they pay out for. Um, I think this is like the number one thing that they pay out. So we have another nulli D. So we can uh, we can see we can maybe try and figure out what that other nulli D is. Um, Probably another malloc failure. So, and if it's in printf, actually we can just uh, take a take a look see here. So that one, let's just scroll up. So we have that out of bounds read, and then this nulli d. This is in printf again still. So, is our was our patch not good enough? This out f. Out F. That must be used somewhere else as well. So let's take a look at where out F is used. Uh, there we null it out. Out file is optarg. Uh, so this one, when we fopen it, if it fails, we'll exit. Else if out F. I think that's the only place we use it. So where else would a printf? Unless we didn't build it, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we, pretty sure we built it. There's a chance that we didn't. Oh man, all out of my music playlist. Oh. Uh, this is tough. All right. Hey, okay, we got the same crashes again. Not a big surprise. Yeah, what is that null DRF? It's in printf, 
And let's take a look at where this is in the printf implementation. So we'll go uh, pop up uh, dev uh, cc65, and we're going to look for There we go. Probably printf, probably the under printf. Let's take a look. Uh, 96. Oh, no. Uh, is there a null format string? No. 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 No, that wouldn't make any sense. That wouldn't make any sense, but that's looking like that might be the case. Uh, let's take a look. This is towards the top in printf. Here we go. Uh, we're just going to follow it side by side. PHA, blah, 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 LDA, uh, K, okay, scroll through, good, 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 percent, uh, TYA. Okay, then we're down here, and where are we crashing? We're crashing here. Okay, we're crashing here. Get next character. How do we have a null deer on a on a, on a format string? Pop AX, store the low byte, get the format string, store it, current ink, add, someone's passing a null to print uh, for a format string. Do I do that? Is that my fault? Um, maybe it's how I implement the error routines. Maybe error routines can, uh, let's look for print uh, first. Ooh, there are some dynamic format strings. Oh, that's me. That's my my code. Um, fixed, fixed. Okay. Okay. Error. Error, error, error null. Ah, okay. So those you can have a nully, a nully boy in there. So let's uh, let's undo this patch because we we mistakenly thought that was the case, and then these error functions uh, apparently can take a null. So let's double check that. Uh, man, um, error format. Uh, it can be any format uh, allowed by printf or null. Okay. Um, sweet. So that is our bug because we don't align with that. So missing functions, all of these. Uh, we'll just say if format. Hey, much better. If format, if format. Done. Fixed. And then we're going to do another change in our kernel. And we're going to make this file name this. A, a, a fantastic file name. Um, and then what we can do is we can search for that and mutate that at the right spot. So um, where are you running this VM now? The Xeon Phi or another CPU with AVX5 toll? Yeah, this is on the Xeon Phi. So I send it out. I ship it out there. Oh, I see. We have a we have a nice uh, we have some spam here. I see. Hmm. Nice. Bye. Okay. So. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
If you're gonna write a spam bot, maybe don't make it so fucking obvious and like pay attention to the channel a little bit or like say something relevant that was spoken rather than just copy pasting the title. I know that the bot probably has no capabilities of doing that, but I don't know. If you're writing a bot, just uh, tune into the stream and maybe maybe have some like maybe have some like speech to text or something like that and and make it a little bit better. This is a hacking stream. You can do better. Write a better bot. Not convincing. Sad. Disappointing. Okay. Unexpected file name. Yep. Yep. That's fine. So we're gonna take this unexpected file name and just needs to start with that big fan of that file um, and now we just want to search in there so when we create the master VM and we create the global context there are a couple things we want to provide so honestly I think it's just that address um, I think we hack in one more somewhere maybe Uh, okay. We want, we want to include the bytes. Once we find, once we find where we're going to add the image. So we have the zero page, we have the stack size, register bank, create the memory for the input file. Where, where do we write it in? Write everything in payload here. So we're going to do a... We have to do this again. Gross. Um, find the file name string, file name index. This is going to be equal to the um, starts with this file name stir. Uh, const file name stir is equal to this. Nice. If it starts with that, okay, and then we'll go down here and we'll do this as bytes dot len. This as bytes. And this is going to be on the payload. Then in our global context structure, we'll have the uh, file name adder is going to be vert adder. Ah. So we'll have the file name adder, vert adder of the load base plus file name index. Okay. Nice. Uh, print file name at. Uh, we'll just do this. Okay. File name at this. There we go. And then here, file name address. Good. That means we have access to it in the global context. Okay, and then down here, instead of this hard-coded thing, we'll do context.this. That's why we pass context structures. Okay, so now with all of that should be automatic. I don't think we have anything hard-coded anymore. Uh, unexpected file name. Well, yep, we're writing to the wrong location. Now we see the Y, the Y. We have the Y. Uh, so we want to get the vert adder of the file name address plus the whatever we call this constant file name stir uh, plus this dot as bytes dot len. Okay, that'll write to the right location. And obviously, if we miss that, uh, it would panic pretty hard. So this is going to write the next thing. 
Okay, so everything is just automatically going to work now. So I think we're going to see that null ED. Um, I think we're going to see that on the uninitialized use of that uh, file pointer, but maybe not. I feel like that we have a write out of bounds. Okay, we have a null DRF here. We have a read. How's that write out of bounds? What is, what is this? What is this? F write. Yep, we have a crash in F write. And we have a crash reading OF30. OF OF30, 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 that is, um, that is something we've never seen before. Uh, OF, FO30. This is one of our, where do we put that? We put that somewhere. Oh, that's an error. Uh, is it? Missing functions, error. Yeah, FO30 and FO31. Okay. So I'm going to make these not... Um, I'm just going to make those exit because I'm... I don't want to see those crashes. That's going to that's gonna scare me. And then we have an access in the right. No surprise. Um, if we take a look in F right where we had that crash, man, why don't I should, uh, I should define. Okay. There we go. We're going to take a look. This is where we're, uh, getting a null DRF. And in this case, this is an F right. Load Y 88. Yeah, it's, it's, that's definitely based on this one. So we're going to go, we're going to go fix this bug. Else if out F. Nice. Okay. So now we have all that working. Okay, fuzzer's coming online. Good inputs. Okay, we got a read out of bounds on the heap. I need my notepad. All right, so. We have a uh, null DREF on, um, what is this? Null DREF on out F on an early put entries. Okay. And then we apparently also have an out of bounds access on the. Um, we apparently also have an out of bounds access on that heap allocation we made. In which case that is uh, e c tags c tags. Yeah, we'll do it here. So in this situation here, we also have. Um, something goes out of bounds on LBuff. So let's take a look. And and that's kind of what I suspected when I was reading the code. Um, hence why I put it in its own allocation. Uh, we got a sterl copy here to LBuff. Those are safe. Those are totally safe. Um, this one's safe as well. Um, could go out of bounds on pattern, maybe. Uh, that one's safe as well because it sets line max. So the issue is someone who uses it. 
one of these consumers. Let's check out print.c. So in this case, it's going to set uh, CP is equal to L buff. Okay, and then it's going to go through We don't have the X flag set, but that's an out of bounds right. Right? Like look at the if X flag, this is just gonna this is gonna clobber. It's going to literally keep incrementing this. It this is like a mem set. Oh my, oh, that's an, I think that's an exploitable bug. That's a, like, like a massive amount of corruption. Save FTEL. Oh my God. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and we're going to go, uh, we're going to go find out how bad this bug trash is. See you in a bit. attack all right so uh yeah so this bug looks pretty bad um unless for some reason save ftel fseek yeah yeah as long as it doesn't eof and as long as it doesn't hit a new line it's just gonna overwrite that uh that L buff, which is a global. So let's make a proof of concept. <laughs> let's make a proof of concept. What's up? How's it going, Cody Codes? All right. Well, that's that's fucked. And so is this. So is this one. I'm guessing. What's end line? End line's fifty. If it's greater than that, break. If it's less than that, count plus plus. All right, so we can probably just have the fuzzer find a bug for us automatically. Get line. Who who uses get line? Get line is used by let's say Fortran. Actually, C uses it too. Let's check out. Uh, let's check out the C one because it's a little bit cleaner. Get line. This will occur. All right, there's three spots where this occurs, right? Parentheses uh, have zero level indicates a function. 
and then get the line immediately. Might be wrong. So this is only gonna crash if we have the V flag. So let's check out what the V flag is. The V flag is an index is produced on the standard output. So if I did a C tags, C tags, uh, we'll do vim test.c, C tags v test.c. Okay, that has the V flag set. Let's, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, gdb args this break get line. Yes, run. Okay. So if not level in token, what else? What's this? If type def and the level is T level get line, what this one might be easier. Type def int ASDF BP get or break get line. Yes, run. Did that not resolve? Uh, oh yeah, let me do uh, user source user dot bin c tag c tags break on get line. There we go. So we're hitting this perfect. And what are we hitting this? What state are we hitting this in? So we're in uh, get line. We're about to ftl inf. And what is it going to get? So step. Oops, I did not want to do that. Uh, we'll just rerun it. Fuck it. Um, F, uh, get line. Run T. It's not T. Uh, not S. It's not N. Oh, it is N. Okay. If X flag. If X flag. It's going to do a get line. Let's see what I can do here. Uh, let's put some A's here. Uh, I don't know. I really want to see what this is reading. I want to like know what it's reading, and I suck at GDB. All right, let's try it again. I'll, I'll learn how to use GDB. Uh, break get line run. Um, it's going to seek to line ftl seek set. Why? This, this is a, this is a no op. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what it's, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, so I can do, I can do next and, uh, info args, info locals. Save ftel is 17. So I know it's at the 17th byte right now. So 17 is here. Uh, then we find that that we take the current token. If it starts with a valid token name, get C. So if that's at 17, does that mean this is what it's going to get? Okay. I'll just do this. Fuck it. Uh, 
I know, I could paste this in a better way. We're at like 4,000 bytes. That yeah, looks good. 6F. Yep. Yeah, we smashed the shit out of the... All right. Nice. So that is memory corruption. Put that down in our handy-dandy handy notebook here. So this is a uh, uh, global corruption in V mode. It, it's it's you just you just win. Um, let's actually check out the state of um, oops. Uh, so we can do object dump on this. Um, L buff. I want object dump. I want data sections. I've never actually used object dump to look at data sections. Uh, S. Let's see if this works. Okay, that's everything. I want, maybe I can do, I can try and disassemble everything. L buff, line F tell, line number, out F. So we can get control of the output file. Um, is L buff really only 20 hex? Hmm. I thought Elbuff, what was Elbuff? Oh, did we modify it? I think we I think we slightly modified it. Let's uh Uh, cd user source tar xvf source dot tar dot gz xzf. This will uh this will replace it, and then we'll build a the fresh one. We'll build a stock version, uh, in this case. This will overwrite all the files that we use. Can you build a case coverage overlay? What do you mean by that? Like coverage per case or cases per coverage? Oh, like an overlay that always shows the coverage number like somewhere on the screen. I could probably do that. I would have to get a little creative, but I probably could find a way. Or even a graph would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, 6871. I mean, that's good. We started off at 5,500. Um, I mean, we started off yesterday at 3,000. Um, you know, we, we've learned that we can go higher and higher and higher up in, in kind of this uh, coverage or in this uh in this application. Uh hmm C tags. Please, please be in my history. Oh, this is not the one I was using to build. C tag uh make clean all. But I wanna do uh C flags equals G LD flags equals G. Okay. Now we object dump. Search for L buff. 
Okay, that looks better. So we know that output file, there's a pointer here. So we can take this address. We can subtract this address. So we want 2064 bytes. So, um, and then we just want to use the output file, which we will. So test.c, we'll just do type def this, a, y, how do you copy a single letter? P, P, okay, V, Y, that works, okay, V, Y, okay, and then we'll do, uh, 2064 P. Okay, so that is now going to be right over there, and then we'll put uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this should crash when we go to um, this should crash when we go to write to the output file. If we write to the output file, We did not. Uh, Lbuff. These flags we don't care about. DSO handle. What's DSO handle? Sounds kind of fun. But we'll try and clobber that output file. Uh, why are we not hitting that output file? Are we causing an error? Uh, did I put it on a new line? Maybe, uh, maybe I need to... I might need to put a, a new line here for it to maybe create that output file. I can also put like uh, some other stuff in there. Exited normally, cat tags, man c tags, index of that, um, center output, contains that, sample use that. Is that not going to create an output file? Let's take a look. If there's a V flag, oh, it'll just print to the screen and it won't use out F. Come on, where else? Where else? Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Out F here. We'll let F close it. If X flag, oh, it does. Uh, what are what are we using? We're using the V flag. We should hit this, right? Print. Uh, this should get hit. I think. A flag. main run t oops uh next what how do you step how do you step over functions s break main s i think steps into functions yeah now we're in get opt Uh, I thought it was N. GDB cheat cheat. <laughs> Come on. Step. Next, go to the next instruction, but don't dive into functions. What? 
what's happening here. Does it just not work? Does 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 GDB not work? Like that was a that was a pretty big step there. Seems to be kind of breaking. Um we can just annotate it. We'll go down here and I'll do uh 2006 GDB buggy. Yeah, I think it's just N, but you know. All right, we'll do uh, printf out f stuff, uh, and we'll get that built. Okay, so we're not hitting that. What are we doing? Go through all the files, fopen it, find entries. That's gonna go through, we'll go to C. Then we get our type def. Get line. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe I need like another semi there. Maybe it's not quote unquote valid. Uh, int main void return zero. That's a valid app. If I do this, we hit it, but not with the V flag. So what's V doing? V flag's not used anywhere in here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we could we could just find uh What else do we have? What else can we corrupt? Where was my object dump? There we go. Uh So we got L buff out F out F. If head and not V flag, that's not the case. Okay. What is causing it to, let's put a, uh, let's put a breakpoint on um, put entries and see where that gets invoked and, and where that is in the call stack. One forty four. If X flag, I thought we were using the V flag. Oh, V flag implies X flag. Is that a bug? Probably not. Uh, produces a list of object names. X flag produces a list of object names, the line number and file 
on the standard output. Oh my god, is there is there no way to do a V flag? Oh man. So that means X flag, so it will call put entries here. What else do we have? Oh no. Oh no, line F tell. What's line F tell? Um, if I can type it. Line F tell, that's used in print. Line tell. What do they do? They use this. Seek to the line ftel. It's only going to use that for seeks. Yeah. Okay. So nothing we can really do with that. We can seek to the wrong location. Can't I just set? Oh, I could. Yeah, I could set. Hmm. C tags dot C. So we corrupted in here, so I can actually set the X flag. Oh my God. I can actually make it use the output file. Yeah. Yeah, I totally can. I totally can. What's LBP? Let me see if there's other stuff here. LBP. Okay, that's a line buffer pointer. Um, yeah, so all we need to do is we overwrite out F and V flag is just the next byte, right? V flag, I just need to clear it. So I need to actually put nulls in. So we're going to do, um, then, uh, Python. Package add our Python 3, hopefully. Python. Yeah, we can definitely uh, set that X flag, I think. Um, actually, we can't, I don't think we can. It'll stop overflowing on the null, no, yeah, I think so. Um, no, new line. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, we're good. Uh, let's grab uh, latest Python 374. Yeah, we'll make, uh, we'll construct this, but yeah, we, we should be able to write nulls over that then. Okay. So we'll take a, we'll object dump this L buff here. Boom. We got a DSO handle. There's probably some, there's, there's probably better ways to exploit this. Um, but I just want to, uh, proof of concept this test dot, uh, vim test dot pi arm. Okay. Come on. Uh, import struct. Okay. So, uh, contents is equal to this contents plus equals struct foo bar. Then we're going to do our type def foo bar. Then we're going to do contents plus equals a times ox. Um, 9b20 minus ox. 
9320. This is the L buff. Then we'll grab the line ftel contents plus equals struct.pack a quad word to zero. And then we have line number. And then we have out f. Okay. And then we have the V flag. And this one is a uh, an I. Okay, open um, test.c, write binary, write contents, and we'll do the with syntax, with open as fd, fd.write, then we'll do uh, os.system, gdb args, uh, user source, user.bin, c tags, c tags, v test.c. Can can cat start to bytes? Yep, bytes b b b b. Let's start off with that. Ah, uh, once again. OS. Uh, xn xg of the x flag. Uh, wait, did we overwrite the wrong flag? We need to overwrite the x flag, and we overwrote the v flag. Next, we'll overwrite the um, w flag, and then we'll overwrite the x flag. This one is also okay. So we've got the V flag, we got the W flag, and we have the X flag. Son of a bitch. Is that ending the read? Mm, I don't think so. Let's check if our math is right uh x10 xg of uh, l buff is that because it's exited put a break on put entries okay we hit put entries x10 xg l buff Um, what's this shit? X10. Plus, what's after L buff? Oops. Uh, what was it? 2048? Okay, line number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it started line F. Oh, it starts at the start of the line. Okay. So there's our overwrites, um, and they're just off by just a slight bit. Okay, so what we want to do is this will be equal to that minus that minus len contents out f stuff how the how did that exit normally oh because that opened the file on top of it shit 
I mean, yeah, that replaced it. Um, shit, what else do I have? So that one's probably not going to work. Out F. LBP. What what's the what's the DSO handle? That's uh That's not used at all. Do a knit in preload. Let's uh let's just smash some A's in here. Nine B A five. I want this to not crash. I want this to go as far as possible without crashing. Um We tried. Uh contents plus equals B A times O X this minus OX ninety three twenty minus len contents I think there's a couple more bytes there that we can hit I'm not I'm not 100% sure but let's see exited normally well I don't like that uh, x10 xg v flag bp in find uh, put entries oops break R X ten X G V flag What? There we go. <laughs> it's not a pointer. I don't I don't know why that would I guess maybe XG treats it as a pointer. Um, how much stuff do we have here? How much stuff can we corrupt? Those all ex like zeros, do init initialized. Hmm. I don't think any of those things are used. <sighs> LBP. Where is that used? Um, is the, are there rights to it? Um, PF functions. F gets line max LBP is equal to L buff. I don't know if there's going to be a situation if this has a get get line here. Uh, get line is that a loop? Oh, we clobber it here, and then at this point we're going to come through and we're going to reassign it. So. Can't do it there. What about here? Ah, uh, this one doesn't even have it scoped. It's only that one file that had it. Yeah. Unless one of these functions goes into there. Doesn't look like it. Um, takes line number. What's LN? That's just uh, informational. 
token at this point. We can't clobber that. Yeah. With this, with a slightly different uh, global state. With a slightly different global state. Um, let's uh, let's put some optimizations in here. See if that changes the shape. I don't know if it will. Probably won't for globals. Um, L buff. Please, 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 please. God damn it. Nope. The inf we could crash or head or or curve file. <laughs> ah. Ah. This is. <sighs> e c tag c tags dot c. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that could move these things around. I mean, it's st it's still a good bug. So this is a uh, oob right on globals. Oob right on globals from uh, globals l buff in as in get line. Yeah, in get line. get line um with x flag set <laughs> okay so well that's sad i really wanted like a nice fun fun 414141d ref but it just I just couldn't squeeze one out there. Damn it. Okay, so got all the coverage. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can flip some of these flags. Let's uh, mutate these flags. So in our fuzzer, we want to kind of randomly turn these flags on and off. That's such a shame. Such a shame. We can at least we can at least get the the glamour shot here. There we go. Nice. <laughs> yep. It's just on the it's out of bounds on the BSS. That's the last page of the BSS. Sad day. All right. Uh, well, our coverage is looking good. What's uh, what's our one crash? We got an out of bounds read as well on that. Okay. We got an oob read. On Elbuff at question, question, question. We could check it. We could check out what it looks like uh, here. What do you mean invalid address, Elbuff? In preload, file tab, center and center out. I mean, you win here. <laughs> you d you d you definitely win in six five zero two land. That's game over. <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can flip some of these flags. We've got append a tags file. 
I don't want to do that. That's going to read the thing. Update. Append. Uh, let's actually see what that does. A flag. Capital B. Use batch, uh, backward searching. Okay. F. Forward searching. Default. So we got the A flag, the D flag. So A flag, A flag, it literally just opens for append. Uh, the D flag, okay. W flag. These are really the only four that we've ever seen hit. So we want to just kind of mutate these bad boys. Um, and I guess what would be the easiest way to do that? What other flags are there? F tags file. We'll ignore, we'll ignore all those for now. We'll just look at these flags. Technically, if we did one of these other ones, we could probably cause it to like, yeah, preload entries. Sturcher is doing stuff on lines, getting into a line, line max. Sturcher, end of line. If it's null, if it's null, if it's null. Skip this file pattern. There could be bugs in here too. And that is on preload entries. That will take a they'll take the output tags file. So we would have to add support to handle multiple files. Um, we can do that definitely. I just wanna get these, let's get these uh, four flags in here. Uh, the X flag, the V flag, the D flag, and the W flag. Okay, I think we can do all of those. So, and that needs to be the end. What is the best way to do this? Are there ignored flags? Maybe like the W flag we could use. Uh, let's see what happens if we do C tags this test.c a what does it do if you have like an invalid one unknown option that okay will this handle a v flag now um yeah that <laughs> nice X. Was it the X flag? I thought it was the V flag. Oh, V flag. Wait, what was it? Uh, that's not what I wanted, is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's the X flag. Yep. So X or V would trigger that. W won't. But if I do this... <laughs> what? What? Didn't that crash? That... What?
Does that like randomly crash? I have no idea. We all saw that, right? How on earth did that crash? And how does it not repro? I have no idea what happened. Didn't it just crash with the X flag for the second time? Like d a delayed print, maybe? I mean, we're running them synchronously. VW, so we did an XVW crash. Okay. No crash. I, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know what caused that. Uh, no such file or directory. I think that's fine. I think that's still parsing it. Yeah, it is. So we should be able to just have all the args here. And then we can just like have them switched in randomly. See? What is that? What is going on? What is this? Am I going absolutely crazy? Why would this crash? I it maybe is getting asslered, but I don't know what Hmm. We, okay, so we have, unless our patches didn't get removed for some reason, where we implemented a custom allocator. Oh, yeah. 
That has the custom allocator one. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say, that's the that's the other that's the null DRF crash. Okay. Whew. Okay, so I should be able to pass in these three args. Three. What do we have? We have the X. All right, let's start closing some of these. Clean them up. All right, XVDW, XVDW, all right, and we did all that fancy stuff to automatically find this C file, but we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to kind of go past that, and, okay, yep. We're just going to build this. All right. These two, this, and here. Boop, boop. Doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot. All right, and we're gonna go to main. Uh, we're gonna check out the where those args are. What? Okay. So, DWXV, we're going to have to make one more change to our code, I think, because we don't handle opens on these. Um, If uh, if descriptors still can't type that if descriptors dot buff is equal to null return negative one that allows us from the outside to cause this function to fail and then we also want to set in use to zero looks good. Now we can take these files and figure them out. Okay. All right, main. Six four twenty three. We only care about the flags, so we have. So we're gonna generate just four bits. Um. Uh, we'll do. Let flags equal to vert adder. This vert adder ox. So we got the D flag here. The W flag. That was at one B, one A, one B, one E. And 21. 1E one e and 21. Okay. 
for flag and flags. I'll do a write conditionally if vm.rand mod2 is equal to zero. Then I'm going to write in, and this just completely ruins coverage by not having the part of the feedback file, but I just want to see what happens. Flag. Uh, and I'm just going to write uh, a B that. Assert that's equal to 1. So we're going to go through all of these addresses. It, there's a 50% chance that we set it equal. Um, we're actually going to we're gonna do like a, rel a relatively low chance. So we're going to have a 1 in 8 chance of using the flag and a 7 out of 8 chance of removing the flag. So if it's not equal to 0, then we're going to write a minus over it at 18... 1b, 1e, and 21. And I don't know if the ordering is going to matter here. I actually don't know. Oh, the ordering definitely does matter, doesn't it? Because uh, if I go into this and I do dash 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 v, no such file or directory. Okay, so I need to figure out what flags I want to use. So let's let D flag is equal to this. Uh, D flag is equal to that. D W X V. Okay, if D flag, then, and we can just do a vector here. Let me this, and I want to do them in reverse order. 18, 1, B, 1, E, 21, and we'll do if D flag, um, uh, actor rules apply flag. It's probably a better way to write this. Um, expert if flag is definitely a better way to write this. Flag chur expert. Apply flag D flag and if flag, then we will uh, let flock is equal to flags dot pop which will get 18, 1B, okay, they'll get them in that order. So at that location, we're gonna write in the flag, and then this will be a D. A D, W, X, V. And I also, uh, the flag and flags, yeah, this is terrible. This is terrible. All right, to flag, flags, we're gonna write, uh, we'll disable all flags. So disable all flags by default, and then we're gonna fill them in in order. Yeah, it's kinda gross. Uh, dot unwrap. A W X V or D W X V D W X V. Okay. 
So it'll write to all the locations with a minus to disable them, and then it will randomly apply the flags. So we'll probably start seeing a lot more coverage now. Probably not that much more, but just a, a smidge. Um, in fact, these are pretty much always failing. Uh... Why is it airing out? Perogen, thank you for following. How's it going? What am I doing? C tags. They're basically just always not working. Why? Let's get some prints going. Not that one. Not that one. That one. Usage. Oh, this implementation of get opt must be different. Ah. I just, I just wanted to hack it. I just wanted to hack it in there so bad. Shit. Ah. But I also wanted it to go through the arg parser, so I didn't want to directly bang in the flags. So... I could potentially like parse and split up the format string and then pass in the actual like construct the argv. I don't know. Damn it. What's the easiest way to do this? What is the easiest way of doing this? I could set these to null and then fill in the pointers, but that would kill the list. So I'd have to reorganize it where this is an order. Um, pretty much, I feel like I can just do like anything. I just have to start kind of working on it. So I can construct the arguments themselves and I could maybe do like new line separated arguments and then parse them out in the C side of things and then I just pass in all the args with like new line separation that could be pretty straightforward and easy um, let's try that Uh, char args is this. So this will be the argument list. And then we'll have the actual arg. This will do like 64. And this will be c tags new line. Actually, we'll make them null separated. I'll have to know the length. Or I could use a double null. It's kind of gross. Kind of really gross. Uh, C tags test.c. And then I'll construct the args. So. You can do sterling on arg. I could also make it uh, CSV. 
Well, if I do CSV, then I'm... I can actually do CSV, and then I can null terminate them in post. Uh, man, I haven't done this in a long time. Some basic string parsing. Uh, size t i i for i i is equal to zero. I i is less than eight. I i plus plus. Then we'll do args i i is equal to null. And so we'll do uh, pointer is equal to arg. Then we'll do uh, we'll do pointer is equal to arg, and then we'll do then we'll do uh, let or char cma the comma. We'll do stircher of arg for a comma, if not cma. Exit. Uh, this will be a volatile int ox. Uh, fo probably forty. We don't use yet. Let's say like four five. So if we can't find a comma, then it's then it's massively invalid. Then we're gonna update pointer to equal arg. So we'll modify the comma to be a zero. And we'll make this static. Uh, so we're going to get a comma. If we could not find a comma, then we bail out. So we're always going to be able to find a comma. Uh, actually, this will be the last case. This will be uh, args i i equals null break. So here so we'll start the loop pointing to here we'll search for this we'll find it we'll then turn it into a null and then we'll update pointer will be equal to a comma plus one so pointer will be here it will null terminate this pointer is still pointing to this now then it advances pointer to point to this which will have a comma and then on the very last one it will search for a comma it will fail to find one, and then it will return a null. So this will be args i i is equal to pointer. So that will be c tags, and then test, and then it will null terminate it. And we'll just make this eight then. I will make it 10 just in case just for off by ones, and then pass those args in. I think that's sane. Uh, include string.h. Okay, car star. What? Is it the other one? What is Sturcher? String character. Oh, whoops. Whoops. Okay, expression expected 33. We don't care about the results. Okay. So I think this is good. It'll try and find a comma. If I couldn't find a comma, it's the end of the list. It will null terminate it and break out. Otherwise, it will null terminate. It'll put a null in place of the comma. It will place the pointer for that argument value. And then it will advance the pointer to where the comma is plus one, which is the next part. I think that's good. So now all we have to do is look for this magical thing. And I'm just going to cheat and use kind of what we had before. Uh, we'll use, we'll make an, a new one. We'll put this in here. If we didn't have that, this should fail to build. 
or this this should runtime fail because it won't be able to find that string. Sweet. Okay, now. So this is what it used to be. File name stir, and this is going to be the arg stir. Uh, and this one is this. Argster. Okay. Oh. Okay, and now we just need to get this working. I just want to get this to work so I can go to bed. <laughs> File name there. Crash reading that. I think it's just pretty much always going to crash now. Wait, really? Where's that crash net? Accessing null. In this case, what happens? Can't find it, passes in null. Oh, uh, we need an argc. argc plus plus, argc. Okay, now this shouldn't crash, it won't work. Nice. Okay, down here, we just need to do compute the flags. Compute the extension. Okay. And we're going to do a... We'll do a write to that location. Okay. Okay. So we're going to write to the file name address and we're going to take we're going to write the virtual address and we're going to write a string. So we're going to construct the string. This is the args and we have to hold a string around. Ah, uh, we can, we can see I think we might be fine on allocations. So we're going to do args is equal to string new args plus equals c tags. That's the start, simple. Rx plus equals, um, then we want to do the flags all separate. So if d flag, then Rx plus equals dash d, dwxv, dwxv, Rx plus equals, and we need commas after all these. And then for the last one, this is going to be the file name, which is unconditional. We just want file name string, which technically there's one spot we need to change. So that one's good. This one plus equals file name string args and plus equals the character. And then args plus equals a comma. It's kind of gross. And then we're going to write that at the file name address. We'll write in args.as bytes. And we'll make sure args.as bytes.len is the size. Expected a string. Ah. <clears throat> uh... All right. Oh, uh, that's going to be gross. File name stir plus sure. Can you plus equals with a character? I want to see if this works. No. Uh, okay, so we'll just make this a list. C, C Y L R.
They have to be strings in this case. CYLR. Yep. Okay, good. I think this is right. And let me just printf. Uh, format is this new line args. Okay. D W X V. What's the issue? Let me get rid of all the flags and see if it still works. <clears throat> Searcher is that. If we can find one, otherwise, null terminate it, put it to the list. Args ii is pointer. Args c plus plus. Um, starts at C tags, finds that, if it's not, sets that to null, null terminates that, adds one to this, into pointer. Then we have args C++, args I. What is the issue? right into the file name address as bytes. Okay, we'll just do a printf here. Printf arg percent d is percent s new line i i that should be fine for i i and then this is pointer. Let's build it and see what happens. What's going on here? Arg zero is uh, let's set this single threaded. So hopefully make it a little bit easier to read the output. Okay, what's going on on the next one? It should be able to find a comma. This isn't greater than 64 characters, is it? I don't I don't think so. We're not even close to that. Yeah, 44. Um Is it due to a lack of a null terminator? We'll whack one in there. Just in case. Now we have an old terminator in there. Arg zero C tags. What's going on? CMA plus one. Oh, uh, that needs to be a pointer. What was it before? Arg? How did that not just infinitely loop? Arg1 is that, so Arg0 is that, Arg1 is that. It's now processing this, uh, going through a bunch of these different things. Okay, and now we have an Arg1 is that. Okay. Okay, and now we can turn these on, see what happens. Okay, so we should see DWXV and then that Arg5 and then it will get null terminated. Okay, just had a simple bug in that. Once this coverage kind of plateaus uh, and the JIT's kind of done, it'll start to get a little faster. So we have an out of bounds right. That's probably the bug that we just looked into. Okay, it looks like everything's working now. So I'm gonna get rid of these prints. Famous last words. And we'll spin up some threads.
All right. Here we go. Come on. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, this is the output. Okay, that's when it's actually parsing it. Uh, print, we'll get rid of the print in our write routine. What machine am I running this on? I'm running this on a uh, single processor uh, Xeon Phi 7210. So it's a Knight's Landing Intel uh, Xeon Phi processor. So it's the second second generation uh, Xeon Phi. So the first generation was Knight's Corner. Technically, they had like Larrabee before that. That was like their their research name for the project. So there's our out of bounds right. So it does find that. Finds a, a read out of bounds. Coverage still going up. I think we've I think we've seen a thousand coverage before. I don't think that's uh, anything too crazy for us. Yeah. I think we've seen high sevens, but not eights. So I don't know where we've plateaued before. Seventy one hundred. Seventy one forty two. That's that sounds pretty good. I don't know if it is, but it sounds good. Let's grab a copy of these. Whack them in here. Let's take a look. Six five zero two. Load to this address. This apply symbols. And. Grab that coverage file, take a look. 7142 seems to be our plateau right now. Okay, that looks... Oh yeah, we've never seen it ret from C tags main, that makes sense. This is like our arg parsing stuff. We just haven't seen some of those paths. Then in here, now we've seen a couple of the different flags, of course. That means we've seen a couple more here. So we've seen both sides of these put entries now. Find entries. This is the, we've hit, uh, Pretty much every single block in here. I guess there's one one branch to the end we missed. <laughs> but I, I don't think that one's hittable. L entries. Ah, we're missing something here. A Sturcher LBP. So there's some state here. There's some like complex-ish. Uh, probably a d dependency between a couple bytes in the input file. Um, and we don't have those set up, so that's something we could improve. Uh, we have color. We have covered every single block in C entries. There's not a single block that hasn't been covered in C entries. Uh, I guess there's like this ink. This is only this is only if the line number exceeds 256, which it won't. Um, then Y entries. And we've hit every block in there. Do we look at L entries? Yeah, L entries is the one we have an issue. C entries, we have everything. Is that it? It's, it's just the three parsers. Okay. Yeah, it's just those three parsers. And we've hit basically everything except for... So everything in Y entries, everything in C entries, and then we missed... Uh, L entries, there's just some complex state we're missing, but 
All right. Sweet. I'm probably going to call it there. I got to I got to go get some sleep. I'm super tired. So, thanks everyone for tuning in. See you around next time.